Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Chapter 2 from verse 2 says, from verse 1 and 2, he said, And the Spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. He said, The Spirit entered, not just the preaching, the Spirit entered me. When he told the prophet, Stand up, he said he didn't have any strength. And he said, When he spoke to me, that word came with a spirit and agency. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, let your word lift me out of these challenges, out of this sickness. Please pray, pray. When you seek God with all your heart, you will find Him. Pray. And the Spirit entered into my finance, and the Spirit entered into my health situation, and the Spirit entered into me. And the spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet. The Bible says the entrance of thy word given light and understanding to the simple. Please keep praying, don't stop. Keep praying, don't stop. Let it be a true desire from your heart. Shake it, parada, parada, boss. not a special number the bread of heaven fill me till I want no just lift your hands and thank you Spirit of God, we thank you. You are mighty. Lord, we are expectant tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
again I want to encourage us that every time we come into his presence your attitude your attitude your attitude is very important when it comes to receiving from God you can come in casually and carelessly just come in to greet people and look around and see faces or you can come with a desperation that nothing can distract you see when you come into God's presence your attitude you must come as though you are ready and willing to receive hallelujah Come, be see we declare your majesty Come, be your see we declare oh worship we hail the most high majesty the one who sits upon the circle of the heavens
the living God we declare that in the name of Jesus this place is open for you find expression may we enjoy the fresh wind of the spirit in this season when you are making and separating men unto honor find vessels unto honor of God find men and agents to the purposes of the kingdom we declare that from the ends of the earth you alone have God we declare that Jesus alone is glorified in our midst raise ordinary people to be mighty it is by your majesty it is by your sovereignty you are the mighty man no one voted you into power no political party can impeach you there is a level of intercourse that happens a level of intercourse that happens when we worship when you are alone with God though in a congregation and a crowd like this but worship separates you 
and the Holy Spirit begins to minister to your needs. We declare your majesty. I declare your majesty. not be one of those services oh God let burdens be lifted let mindsets be changed let mantles and graces and anointings fall upon your people in the name of Jesus God bless you please be seated quietly just pick up your Bible presence of God is mighty. Oh, yeah. 
bring to you. For this is the way you follow me. Lord, I love the way you follow me. You are the reason, the reason I live. You are the song, the song that I sing. You're my song in the night. You're my melody in the day. It's a piece of my worship. My secret place. My secret place. My secret place. There's an overflow of my secret place. Your majesty. I will go on and on. I will go on and on. Bringing you the worship you deserve. And I will go on and on. Yes, on and on. You deserve my worship. And I will go on and on. And on and on. Brothers and sisters, I'm teaching you how to dig into ancient fountains of power. This is how to dig into the wells of grace. This is how to dig into the wells of freshness in the spirit. His majesty. <laughs> hey! His majesty. Don't think I'm wasting your time. Your majesty. This is how the songs come in the spirit. Melodies that were not composed. Falling like the dew of heaven. May he put a song in your mouth. He says, You put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise. Many will see and hear and put their trust in him. I tell you, I can go on and on. If this is all I do tonight, it's worth it for my king. Because as I sing, then he steps into my life. Then he steps into my situation. Then he steps into my finances. I authorize him through my worship. I attract him as I invoke his presence in worship. I lift him above my challenges. When I worship him, I magnify him.
See, let me tell you something. What I'm teaching you tonight, what you are doing, is an ancient mystery. It's how mighty men tap into deep fountains of power. You may not, some of you may think we're just wasting time. I'm sharing with you a piece of my secret place. Ancient fountains, I tell you. If, if you keep going like this, you stretch it one hour, two hours, you will touch a fountain in the spirit that everyone will know you touch something. The problem is we don't stay long enough. Every time his presence starts coming, flesh starts telling us time is going. When you bring time into the equation, you ruin his presence because it's eternity invading time. He does not come into your, your presence on your terms. He comes in on his terms. That's where we miss it. We don't stay long enough until the glory rubs up on us. When the glory comes, flesh starts distracting us. And we think we are wasting time because we do not know what happens when we worship. He fights your battles. Your worship is a language. It lifts up your pain before God. It lifts up your challenges before God. Your worship is a language. It lifts up your request before God. You don't need to mention it. Don't let the devil say you must mention it. No, it's an ancient mystery. It's the mystery of prayer and supplication. You sing out your pain. You sing out your tears. You sing out your mountains. And as you sing them, those mountains collide with his majesty. They collide with power. Your majesty. It's your majesty. Learn it. Learn it. It's your majesty. When God releases his glory upon the people, don't be too quick to allow the glory lift. It's your majesty. It's your majesty. Yeah. We declare your majesty. Sing. Kindness are key. It's your majesty. A pretekete baba bakata. Shekete koto bakata. E protos ke pekete leketa. Shekete kete kete kete. Leke protos lekete. E prata koto po lekete. Shekete kete 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 le bokosu. Brata kata ba koko sumplekete, haka brata na ba tekete, shekete bekete prekete bena na ba koso to prekete leka. Brata kata na ba kate, bekete te ba koso to lekete na ba 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 ba. Kete na 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 ba. It's your ma, it's your majesty, majesty. Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your manifested presence. Please sit down if you can. The seat is not comfortable. Just take whatever position. God is already doing a lot of things. Let me tell you, there is a heavy spirit of prophecy in this place. Heavy spirit of prophecy. That's why I kept singing. Because I began to sense, I began to sense the spirit of prophecy. And, and we must sing it to come. Oh, let it come, let it come, oh God. Let it come. 
is the mystery with which we will know what predates our age we will not stop it let it come we need to be made mighty men and women let it come let it come let the spirit of prophecy let it fall upon us inside and outside everywhere let the spirit of prophecy fall open our eyes oh god talk oh eyes oh god open our ears to hear the shofar of the spirit it's your majesty listen see let me teach you something listen the presence of God is is always around but there are certain times your worship touches a dimension of him you must be help them please you must be sensitive enough to know when he comes in we are not a religious people if this is all we do tonight because there are men who came here hungry there are times God just brings in a level of grace. Both of you lift your hands. Lift your hands, both of you. Take it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Shake Alaba. Your majesty. Wait, your majesty. Your majesty. It's your majesty. please lift up your hands whether you are sitting or standing just lift your hands lift your hands lord i pray that dimension your people have longed for right now i prophesy in the name of jesus take men into realms in the spirit i command it in the name of jesus i declare it in the name of jesus let the hunger of men be met right now let there be a rain blow oh thou wind of the spirit blow and separate men amen Oh, Jesus, I open you up to angelic encounters, encounters of angels, encounters of power, ancient dimensions of the ancient dimensions of prophecy. I unlock fountains. Let the east gate be open in the name of Jesus. Let the east gate be open and let the wind blow new levels of grace new levels of power let the call of fire rest upon your tongue let the call of fire rest upon your let the call of fire rest upon your tongue this is how you become mighty you must learn to be sensitive don't get too organized that you do not know when God steps in don't get too mechanical he knows you need to be healed he knows you need Rema but let me tell you when he comes he upgrades you he upgrades you in the spirit what is happening to us is a promotion in the spirit is how god increases the ranking of men in the spirit go ahead and pray in tongues let's just pray in tongues for a while come on men of prayer where you are just begin to pray
so that that which you have received will sink into your mind. Activate that which you have received. Increase the dimensions of grace. Increase the dimensions of grace. Increase the dimensions of grace. Increase the weight of your presence. Increase the weight of your glory upon our lives. We want to be envoys of your power. Envoys of your grace. Listen, this is koinonia. This is koinonia. It's not the name of a meeting. It's an experience. It's not a Sunday worship service. This is koinonia. All the men you see and admire, both around and in this ministry, this is how they were trained. This is how they were built. It's a spiritual drilling that will make you mighty. It's a spiritual drilling that will open you up to fountains of grace. This is how your prayer for power will be answered. This is prayer for spiritual influence will be answered. Just worship some more. Don't be tired. Your majesty. Your majesty. Your majesty. It's your majesty. Your majesty. It's your majesty. It's your majesty. Your majesty. It's your majesty. Obadiah Obadiah chapter 1 You are catching fire tonight. Obadiah 1 verse 21. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau. And as a result of their ministry, the kingdom shall be the Lord. It says, Saviors shall come out. Saviors. This strange species of men and women, this strange dimension of beings, ordinary men doing the words of God, men who are not limited by anything, they have sustained a strategy in the spirit that keeps them victorious in the earth realm. He said, but time will not fail me to talk about Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, shut the mouth of lions. He said, women who received their dead back to life. You are writing your own history. Your sacrifice. 
is giving you access to touch what the ancient touched hallelujah hallelujah listen you see koinonia is is a collection of all kinds of people and god does not want to live anyone's life to chance some of you watching me you will be the ones doing what i'm doing one day you see that so god is preparing you if, except you don't want the anointing except you want to join the bands of liars and noisemakers but if it is true grace you want there is no shortcut to it I'm telling you this is how it happens this is how it happens hallelujah please be seated if you can be seated if you can don't worry just leave all those you can't sit just find somewhere sit on the floor just do whatever you want to do let me just establish a few things and then we will close I come against everything I come against every force and every foul spirit I know what I'm seeing in the spirit I come against every spirit I come against every spirit. I come against every spirit. I change every prophecy that lingers upon the head of anyone that is not of God. I come with the rod of a higher priesthood in the name that is above all names. I declare that the enchantment of men the wickedness of men, the scourging tongues, men who have sworn by the sky, sworn by the stars and the constellations to manipulate the destinies of men, I bring into alignment in the name of Jesus. I speak by an apostolic voice tonight. I challenge the constellations and I command them to release the destinies of men. The binary of the order of the heavens I command in the name of Jesus that every arrangement that has been sworn and has been as a result of that bringing men into failure, poverty, spiritual backwardness. I challenge those powers from the second heavens. I challenge you by the blood of the eternal covenant. I open those gates. I open those doors. I open those dimensions. In the name of Jesus, things that have been manipulated, visions that have been corrupted, experiences that have been aberrated, I bring for purity to your dreams, to your visions, to your spiritual experiences. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Be seated. Oh, she. Just be sensitive to what God is doing. It will be for a few minutes and we'll round up. There may not be room to do any serious teaching because I began to sense this right from home. I began to sense that it was tonight was a time of activations just activations and let me tell you it is very important for a ministry that as we begin to teach have miracle services there are services that are special impartation services this is one of such just impartations raw impartations of the spirit it is part of the ministry of the word look you need grace i'm telling you you need it you need the anointing I said it last week the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference the anointing is the difference between failure and success the anointing is the difference between your current CGPA and where you need to get to the 
the anointing is it you will struggle for nothing but the anointing so don't you think what is happening is just power to heal the sick the anointing is the difference between you and that joblessness the anointing when the principles have been taught and you understand the principles when your obedience has been perfected you need an agency that forces compliance in the spirit the name of that agency is the anointing we live in a wicked world where there are all kinds of assaults of darkness it is through the greatness of thy power that your enemies will submit themselves recurrent sicknesses it comes and goes comes and goes brother you need the anointing i tell you all kinds of manipulation of darkness in the dream eating all kinds of nonsense hearing all kinds of sounds the anointing does not make the difference it is please learn this it is the difference it is the difference you can do ministry listen to men of god and get their tapes and copy what they are saying you will never see the result until you pass through this process it is the anointing that gives life to your words it's not about speaking it's not just about rema you can hear what somebody said you can get a koinonia message preach word for word it will not produce the effect because the anointing how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power and he went about his academics he went about the business he went about the ministry the anointing is what will separate you marriage will not just come because you are beautiful no 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 the anointing it says because of the ointment do the virgins love thee because of the ointment not because of your looks sons of solomon he said because of the ointment there is an aura esther began to anoint herself with a kind of oil for one year and ahasuerus picked her as queen it is the anointing that is the difference they can call anybody for a job it is the anointing that separates you please respect the operation of the anointing don't let men just tell you that you will keep doing everything you are doing and it will never work until there is the anointing koinonia is nothing without the anointing you can print all the posters you can print all the banners you can but the anointing your life is grossly deficient and you see jesus was given the anointing without measure and we are all attaining there but it doesn't mean you have the anointing without measure it's not true i've had preachers preach that you have the anointing without it's not true brothers and sisters for there is a progression in the spirit and he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my feet and he watched my response to that dimension of operation after a while he increased it again boundaries can be enlarged in the spirit all of us are not functioning at the same realm that's why you can do what everybody is doing but your results are different it is the anointing it is the anointing you can collect the mic with a beautiful voice and sing but it is the anointing he said they were caught to the heart as peter began to speak have you read the message in acts chapter 3 it's not the kind of message you preach in a crusade but the anointing made the difference i treasure the anointing and i treasure the custodian of that anointing that's why we honor the ministry of the spirit let me tell you when you are anointed you are anointed the worst that can happen is you can be criticized but no man can doubt the finger of god he said if it is bad no kingdom divided against itself will stand right he said if i by the finger of god do this the anointing please pray in one minute where you are and say lord let it come like the dew of heaven upon my life the anointing i don't know how else to teach you this you must desire the anointing
the anointing will bring favor to your life i'm telling you in one day it will open doors of prosperity you never imagine you don't need to know nobody i'm telling you the anointing can bring peace to that family it can bring peace the anointing can bring peace hallelujah listen there are many of us we have been able to take steps from the teachings that have been coming here but for many of us the missing ingredient is that anointing samson with the anointing did mighty things when when what's the name of that lady when delilah came delilah was attacking the all she was concerned about was the anointing are you getting my point delilah had no business whether samson was strong no 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 she said what is the source of your strength tell me that's all i want to know not when are you going to marry me not when will you take me to chicken republic i want to know how come you are a man who is so slim yet you remove gates yet you use jaw bones to do mighty things what is the secret and samson kept it the anointing was hidden in his hair right according to the prophecy that was given there was a spiritual code that governed the operation of the anointing and he was told to protect it as a nazarene he would not cut his hair the spirit of the antichrist walked in delilah to keep luring him and samson said do this and that and she cried and said samson all she was after was the anointing that's why the devil is called antichrist the one who fights the anointing He fights the anointing he uses all kinds of things to fight the anointing blackmails to fight the anointing your past failures all he's attacking is the anointing because when you lose the anointing you've lost it all. and she shaved the head of samson samson the philistines are after you he got up they didn't tear any part of his body but the anointing left and he was as weak as any ordinary man and then they removed his eyes immediately and samson began to be a slave the only thing that came back to samson's life was the anointing when they went and samson stood and began to ask god for mercy they kept samson the anointing was being mocked by a dragon a god and they said you who has troubled the philistines but samson said oh lord and while in minutes the hair began to grow they didn't know they didn't notice it they were dancing and when the hair came suddenly the anointing came brothers and sisters when the anointing is on your life the result is instant 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 the day you start preaching with the anointing everybody will know you don't need to tell everybody call me pastor they will call you ministers of our god when they see the anointing you don't need to tell anybody i'm a, i'm a great businessman let the anointing come the anointing please pray in one minute just do what i'm telling you to do say lord i need the anointing in my life i need the anointing in my life for those of us who have seen a measure or so of the anointing say lord increase my boundaries in the spirit <laughs> stretch the boundaries so god in the spirit activate new possibilities in my life by the agency of the anointing let me lead by the anointing let me write that jam by the anointing let me write that wayek by the anointing let me write the exam by the anointing. Let me do my office activities by the anointing. Let me preach. Let me run this ministry by the anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please sit down. We have just about an hour or so, and then we're done. Let me see how we can just 
touch whatever we can touch. We're supposed to start a new series tonight. And um, there is a special teaching on the anointing. I already sense that there are fountains that in the days to come we're going to touch in the spirit. Hallelujah. So all of the teachings have been preparations towards it. And um, I hope we will be able to touch it. We'll just do a two-part series, I think. We'll just reduce it to a two-part series and touch whatever we we'll touch. Then eventually we'll continue. Maybe by next month. Hallelujah. Oh, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. We're taking a series called The Imagines. The Imagines. It's a series that seeks to reveal to us God's prophetic operation in the nations and in the continent of Africa right now. In this series, we're going to be exploring what God is currently doing now. We will unveil the plot of darkness that looms upon the nation. There are all kinds of terrorist groups arising. Right? Rebellion across the states what what is happening these things are prophetic writings on the wall and we need to understand and begin to see these things from the lens of prophecy the emergence so the first part of it is going to be talking about the prophecy the prophecy that is upon god's people the prophecy that is upon our nation the prophecy that is upon the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in this end time. And then I will also be touching on the making of reformers. Is the part one. That's what we'll be doing today. I will show you the spiritual system with which God makes men. How men are made in the spirit. How an ordinary man can become a man of power and stature in the spirit. Hallelujah. Then the next part of the series will be talking about the strategy, the ecclesia of God. God's strategy for this coming apostolic invasion. The Bible says, nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. And so we need to be prepared on how to align ourselves. God has always had a system. There has been a prophecy. Listen to me, please. I want you to know that we are in the middle of prophecy. We are in the middle of history. Hallelujah. The signs that the Bible begins to give that will happen are already happening. Look at what is happening in America. Look at what is happening in the Middle East. Down the sub-Saharan Africa. Nigeria. Darkness looms across the nations of the earth. Hallelujah. The pride of kings have been humbled in these seasons. Economies are melting down. Several things are happening across the territories of the nations. And God did not leave us in the dark. Hallelujah. He said, for behold, darkness covers the earth. And gross darkness the people that was a reality that would happen at a particular point in history and this is that time when darkness is covering the earth there are all kinds of perversions right the speakings of the beast the antichrist put as a system and as an entity i had a lot to talk about tonight but i hope that the emergence, the occultic societies, the Freemasons, the Illuminatis, these fraternities that are a symbol of rebellion, they have marked their presence across the entire strata of human activities, from the economy to the media to music. Watch this, please. But in this last day, because...
the system of the antichrist also has its mode of operation are you getting my point now the system of the antichrist is the system that will usher in the presence of that figure not just a as a system and listen to me there is a secret rebuilding of the tower of babel going on in the nations right now genesis 11 begins to tell us that a man under the influence of the spirit of the antichrist called nimrod the son of Cush, he began to mobilize men to build a city that did not honor god that city is being rebuilt again hallelujah the governmental policies that are being put the ideologies according to revelation 13 and when you read so on and so forth the speakings of the beast remember what john saw john said he saw a lamb with horns and he was about to bow to that lamb remember and about to bow when the lamb spoke he saw a lamb but he had the voice of a dragon and immediately he said this is not the lamb that was what john saw right a mixing of the truth looks like the lamb talk like the lamb or acted like the lamb but his mouth began to betray and when john listened he said uh -uh, because my sheep hear my voice and he said this is not the voice of the lamb this is the voice of a dragon so there is a secret rebuilding of the tower of babel this this antichrist system you've heard a lot about the illuminati and their agenda and we all laugh and just think it's a figment of imagination but let me tell you something it is it is the strategy of the devil masquerading itself in secrecy but in these days there is an open show of darkness it's no longer a hidden thing are you hearing what i'm saying it used to be a secret fraternity of the elite and so occasionally by divination they see through the vistas of time and they handpick potential people across music across the arts and entertainment across business and so they come to you with a proposal to manipulate things according to their will you become a benefactor when you sell your soul to the devil mystery babylon the ancient secret of initiation that brings men into fraternity with a system that is godless hallelujah and it is all the composition of the systems and so they went on with every kind of demonic manipulation let me tell you something i've said it again and again i have an apostolic call i'm not a pastor and so i'm not one of those who will sugarcoat a lot of things no no listen i tell you the truth aside from the war between israel and the world every war that is happening in this earth is a big drama theater and performing arts that's what is going on a secret manipulation of darkness please are you hearing what i'm saying i told you that the owner of i think it was mtv was asked and he said how come you have so much influence on the little children i think of ages 8 to 16 or thereabout and he laughed he said we don't influence them we own them we have developed a structure already that grows with them right and so they have invaded everything most of these organizations you celebrate are all fraternities of darkness they have signed their allegiance let me tell you satan is called the god of this world have you been told is it not in your bible the bible says he took jesus to a mountain and showed him the glories of this world and said if you bow that's the only condition bow means sell your soul bow means prove that you are not equal with god and i will give you and watch this i began to explore especially the music industry very intricately i don't know why the attention of darkness has moved very closely to music right the highest advocates of the illuminati are businessmen and musicians right please listen to me very important i'm showing you the structure we're going to talk about the emergence i hope is the I'm, I'm talking about the prophecy now darkness the word darkness there does not necessarily just mean like absence of light sunlight a system 
And remember the Bible calls certain classes of spirits rulers of darkness. That means their dominion is magnified when there is no light. They are not called rulers of light. Rulers of darkness. And so they have controlled the economy of nations. They have controlled everything. Almost all the music artists that have been killed, right? All of those people you, you used to know are people who at one point or the other started violating their allegiance because they looked and they found out that this is a system of injustice, a system of darkness, and any attempt to revolt will cost you your life. Please listen to me. I have seen many things. I'm not one of those who stands on stage and begins to prophesy national and all of that. But let me tell you, on the strength of my secret place, the Lord has shown me many things. And one of the things that will begin to happen upon the nations of the earth is an open show of evil. It's it, they, they have masqueraded it until they built sufficient structures. Now they are removing the mask and saying we are the ones make no confusion about it we are the ones that control your economy we are the ones that control your educational system we are the ones that control what your children watch we can manipulate technology i thought we we'll have time today i would have shown you a few documentaries that will shock you maybe next week we'll do that right and you will be shocked to see the extent to which this antichrist system is already building the system of Babylon. Taking anything that looks like God out. There are two things that are of concern to me. Number one is what we call the demonic doctrine of universalism. Let me explain to you what that means. Look up please. The teaching that every religion is an aspect of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That is just different sides of seeing the same thing. Have you been taught that? So there are all kinds of Christian sects especially. Occultic sects branching out. pseudo Christian sects. And they have one mission. To be able to market this doctrine of in quote love and universalism. That means it doesn't matter. There are different ways to get to God. Rather than criticizing me find my similarity with you so that we become friends are you seeing that now it is the same spirit of acts chapter 16 when a lady who was with the spirit of divination when paul entered the city what happened she started looking for the areas of similarity he is fivefold i am fivefold he said these are mighty men why so that if paul preaches for three days or one week and goes out people will say you are the friend of paul so we will listen to you system of darkness eating people up i've said it again and again i i i pray so much especially for our little children who are growing because the system was well designed this is not something that started 10 years ago 20 years 100 years no it's a strategy by the devil right they worked with demons to manufacture aids they worked with demons to manufacture cancer they work with demons to bring Ebola. They are, they are a deceitful people. They claim they love Africa. They claim they love the nations. They have sold their souls to the devil. There is no iota of love in them. They stand and tell lies because they own the televisions that give the news. They own the papers that bring the news. Are you ready for tonight's teaching? And right now, there is no hiding again. They are already beginning to come one by one. Opening up the fact that the fraternity of darkness they are involved with is the source of their strength. They have acquired all the money. They have acquired all the fame and everything. And they are now manipulating people. But the, another point, I told you that the point of concern is this music. Why... Why is the attention of darkness so much on music? I will tell you why. I began to find out that it was an ancient mystery that every time it was time to bow to a king or a deity, 
music will precede that homage. Please, are you hearing what I'm saying? This is a, this is, I pray that you'll get what I'm saying. It was the custom of kings in ancient times. They would stand upon the pinnacle of their temples. And so they will now say, all hail the king. And there will be shofars that will be blown. Right? And at the sounding of that shofar, the entire nation will bow. If it was a graven image, they would do the same thing. Was that not what happened in the days of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? You remember? They told them that music will be played. The moment you hear that music, know that it is now time. What follows that is a bowing. And that's the same thing that is happening. So the devil is already using the weapon of music to force men to bow to this God of gold. That stature called the Antichrist. Let me tell you something. I'm already seeing the formation of the government of the Antichrist upon the earth. It's not something that will happen in one day or 10 years or 20 years, but it is a formation. There is already a formation of that godless system. And if the church of the Lord Jesus Christ does not arise to sustain the strategy from the spirit, to be able to raise a standard, then very soon we are going to be victims. So there is an emergence. Because the Bible told us the moment you see darkness covering the earth, at the same time, coincidentally, the army is rising. See that? So it's a teaching that prepares us Revealing to us that every day brings us into the reality of prophecy. Every day. Everything that happens across the nation is right now prophetic. Politicians understand right now that they are in the middle of prophecy. Individuals understand right now that they are in the middle of prophecy. Did you know that Koinonia, you're coming here, they are all interwoven in the prophecies of this book. We may never know you may not find a place in this book written Joshua Selman or your name but it is all part of the prophetic agenda of God whether you believe it or not Jesus is coming soon let me repeat myself whether you believe it or not I'm announcing to you that Jesus is coming soon gullible preachers prefer talking about money than that but I am telling you Jesus is coming soon say amen it's coming soon but before his coming, he gave us an assurance that there will be a global awakening. There will be an arising and imagine a clash of kingdoms. So there is a prophecy that is upon the world that the knowledge of evil, the rage of evil will increase. The fierceness of wickedness will begin to multiply because the spirits that have been kept until this season, as they are released from the pit of darkness, they come with fierce anger. The Bible says Satan has fallen upon the earth with great fury because he knows his time is short. There, is, there are unleashings of arsenals of darkness and the church and the anointing is the target. So marriages right now are under attack. Right? Marriage is under attack. All kinds of things happening. The devil is coming with all sorts of strategies and gimmicks. But there is a generation that will call him a liar. And we are that generation in the name of Jesus Christ. But at the same time, there is a prophecy upon us. Over there, 121, we read it. That saviors will arise out of Zion the city, the place of God, the place where they have been built and trained and prepared. Saviors shall arise. And he said they will judge the Mount of Esau. That rebellious entity, that system. The Antichrist system is called many things in the Bible. Jezebel, the dragon, Babylon, Egypt. They are all an expression of one and the same government running from Genesis to Revelation. That city of rebellion. Hallelujah. But it's not enough for the church to know that there is a prophecy upon us. That we have a prophetic destiny. We must understand that there is a system with which God will build and make men. And around three. One great woman that uh, I've, I've read a bit of her, uh, her you know her books and her encounters with Jesus Christ. 
she began to talk about the coming revival i read a lot about revivals both past and present and the revivals to come i began to read about how she said that jesus appeared unto her she had encounters with jesus for like a year true genuine encounters and in that encounter he began to reveal to her about the coming revival and she was granted access to see the dealings and the preparations of the spirit and the way the inhabitants of the earth the church the ecclesia god's system of victory will be built and equipped hallelujah so there is a prophecy upon us say there is a prophecy upon my life say one more time there is a prophecy upon my life you must believe that you are not ordinary listen you're coming to koinonia whether you are inside or outside everything that is happening is leading you towards prophecy it may not look like it you came for koinonia with pains you came to zaria maybe as a student or you came to zaria maybe to serve or you came to zaria because you got a job or marriage brought you you in the midst of all of these confusions i want you to know that there is a line of prophecy there is something happening in your life that is bringing you towards prophecy praise the lord and it's important for us to know that but then how does god make men because it's not enough to just know that there are there are reformers and revival is the making of reformers what is the spiritual process this will explain to some of us the happenings in our lives right now and it will help and encourage us to stay true as God is working on us. Hallelujah. When the Lord began to show me this, my eyes were opened and I said, my goodness, can you imagine? First Peter chapter 4 verse 12, please. Are you there? Everyone read is projected. One to read. Beloved, think it not what? Hold on. That means don't think it is a surprise to you. Don't, don't act as though it were something strange. He said, think it not strange concerning the what? Fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. That's what the Bible is saying. I'm showing you the process, the mystery of the furnace of affliction. That furnace with which God makes men mighty. Please listen to me. God is ministering to us right now. There is no making of a champion without a process that will require pain, discipline, pruning, and alignment. Please don't forget this. There is no champion. I said it, I think it was last week or the week before last. Nobody wins the Olympic by mistake. No man of God just happens to be anointed by mistake. There's no such thing as that. No one just carries the glory of God by mistake. I want you to know that there is a spiritual pathway to accessing true power, to accessing relevance and strength in the spirit. To be a steward of God's finances. To be a steward of God's glory. To be a steward of God's grace. Very important. And one of that mystery is the mystery of the furnace of affliction. You may not like what it, this is, but I want you to listen to me very carefully. The furnace of affliction. It was Job that began to speak to us. And he began to communicate his the tragedy that came upon his life. Hallelujah. It was Paul that began to speak to us about a thorn in his flesh. It was Moses and all of these people, Joseph, that went through certain things. Listen to me, please. Tonight, I want to change your understanding and your interpretation of affliction and trials. Now, I know that I've done a teaching on that. I think spiritual timings are there about. You can listen to it. There are certain things that happen to men that are orchestrated by darkness. I personally do not believe that God willingly takes evil or darkness or trials or this and puts upon people. However, I believe that according to the system of his wisdom and sovereignty, 
he is able to take advantage of situations in our lives and orchestrate that through them they are used as schoolmasters to prune and bring us to a point of stature and strength and relevance and usefulness in the spirit i believe that absolutely i don't know how many other people got their anointing and their grace but let me tell you there is no spiritual champion there is no principality in the kingdom that did not go through the mystery of the furnace of affliction you must understand this you don't have to pray against it there's nothing to bind there are you getting my point the only thing that happens for you or happens in your life at that point is grace the sustaining power of the spirit to go through it and finish well isaiah 43 verse 1 and 2 says fear not i have redeemed you he said i have called you by name you are mine he said when you pass through the waters i will be with you he said through the river it shall not overwhelm you but he said when you walk through the fire not run to it when you walk through the fire you shall not be burned when you walk through the fire listen to me it's very important the way they make the anointing in israel they still do that i have i have i have anointing oil straight from israel with with mar spikenard and all of these things that were used ancient ingredients the, the the spices that were originally used it smells the exact requirement the ingredients god gave i have i have a um, a bottle of, of of anointing oil like that and every time i just put a little of that on my hand i keep looking at it and the fragrance is nice the smell but then i studied a bit on how they make that olive they have what they call a crushing stone right and they take that olive and they pour it there and they put a heavy stone upon it and they start turning round and it puts pressure and it begins to crush that olive and as it crushes the olive it begins to squeeze out the oil are you hearing what i'm saying it is that way that god will make you become a man of true power afflictions are not there to kill us the furnace of affliction reveals the spiritual system that brings us to the point of obedience jesus said he learned obedience by the things he suffered he learned it it was not an impartation he learned obedience there were orchestrations in his life that compelled him to walk in obedience you will not align yourself to spiritual things just by default there is an operation of the spirit there are happenings and orchestrations around your life that are aimed at bringing you to a point where you begin to see from god's perspective and if you do not know that this is a pathway to carrying grace you will run and allow the devil mock god in your presence say after me god forbid hallelujah the first thing i want you to know about challenges that is that number one affliction and trials are not necessarily an indication of lack of faith let me deliver somebody right away there are many of us who are going through all kinds of situations right now from finance to your health to maybe marriage to whatever it is and we have been made to think that the entire reason why everything is happening to us is because of lack of faith let me tell you something i have learned by experience especially for students it's not every student who is suffering in class that is as a result of carelessness or laziness it's easy to conclude that people and look at them and say your cgp is on one point something you know it's a terrible thing you are an embarrassment to redemption however it may not be everybody but let me tell you there are a few people that they, there is a strange pathway in the spirit that they are taking that is taking them to where they themselves do not know just follow me there are many families that may not understand why in spite of their righteousness and their love for god they are tithing and giving and they are committed to spiritual things it looks like there are certain orchestrations that just seem to draw them back it's like a a cycle of woes and pain i'm telling you this that there are dimensions of the dealings of the spirit that are not demonic 
it is called the mystery of the fullness of affliction this this teaching is not for babes it's not just receive receive it, because i'm explaining to some of you the mystery behind what is happening in your life in spite of your prayer you hear god about everything but not that situation and god looks silent lord what is all this and it looks like you receive a prophetic word for others but for you you have fasted for one week at the end of the prayer all the scriptures you had were about comfort i want you to know that there is a school you are passing through and what you are receiving is a lecture pay attention hallelujah moses did not know why he ran away and for 40 years there were certain processes he was going through he did not understand until the god of israel called him and told him that he, there was a prophecy upon his life prophecies do not just manifest just because you love god there is a pathway it may not be for everybody but everyone who truly wants to be used by god goes through this pathway the fullness of affliction like a blacksmith right that melts metals to remove their impurities and now begins to carve them there are several um expressions in the bible that are used to describe this process the potter and the clay the blacksmith there are all kinds of processes the bible begins to tell us about the potter and the clay how that he picks up the clay smashes it right and now begins to mold it into fashion The fullness of affliction is a is a pathway in the spirit is the root that leads you to galatians 2 20 that realm called i have been crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ that lives in me and this life that i live in the flesh that is the body i live by the faith of the son of god who loved me and gave himself for you come to a point where you have no life in your own. Your ego is stung until there is nothing to sting it again. There are all kinds of things that happen to you. I want you to know that there are people sitting right now, right here, that are going through that pathway in the spirit. You prayed and you said, God, use me. Anoint me and make me mighty. And God said, Amen to that prayer. You just did not know that what is happening to you is amen to your prayer. Lord, make me that multi-billionaire businessman. I will advocate for the kingdom. And God said, amen. It's just that we have not been taught how God answers our prayers. We have only been taught that result is the only proof that God has answered your prayer. But let me tell you, when you begin to mature in the things of the spirit, the fullness of affliction can be an answer to your greatest prayer. Is God speaking to us? So number one, afflictions and trials are not necessarily an indication of lack of faith. Please look at me. Many of you have been fasting and have been saying, Lord, I don't have faith. I don't have faith. We taught on faith, I think it was last week or, or week after last many of us have been taught if you pray about something and it does not happen you never had faith if you had faith it would have happened let me tell you i honor and i respect those teachings but it depends on the dimension you are standing in the spirit for you to be able to say some things are you getting what i'm saying not every affliction is as a result of lack of faith there are men who you are going through the fire right now because you have faith that's the reason why you are going through it I feel God is ministering to people. Hallelujah. You stand on that board and you see what you did not want to see. And tears rolling down your eyes, you say, Lord, you are faithful. And other people look at you and say, when will you stop your laziness? There's no need trying to explain to them. It's a pathway you don't go in group. You go alone. It's a lonely road. No matter how men love you, when you get to the end of that road, they must leave you. You can be in a relationship with your darling and sweetheart, you will part ways. Are you getting one? The fullness of affliction is customized with your name on it. Nobody can help you to take the fire out of love. 
you know that thing they used to say back say region no way it doesn't work when you are passing through the furnace of affliction you pass alone please listen to me hallelujah are you getting what i'm saying number two your tears and expressions of pain do not necessarily reflect unbelief your tears and your expressions of pain and do not necessarily reflect unbelief you must learn this there are so many people who have been stopped from crying in the church why are you crying rejoice look let me tell you it's not every seed you sow crying there is he that weepeth bearing precious seeds it's not everything in life that happens with joy please are you hearing what i'm saying don't let any man fool you there are things that will happen in your life no matter how anointed you are it will bring tears out of your eyes tears and expressions of pain are not a sign of unbelief learn this and jesus wept the bible didn't say and he wept he mentioned the name of the person who cried and your jesus it's all right to cry and express pain you get to a point in your life where it overwhelms you there are times that lack of finances will eat you up and you stand and you are seeing i can follow one allergy somewhere and be blessed but i love god and i stay but the truth is the reality at the moment is that there is no food it's not like somebody is bringing food in the evening there's nobody that is sending you money anywhere the furnace of affliction the place where mighty men are made that's that's where reformers emerge for david it was the cave of adulam he ran and he stayed there on asylum he ran away ran away from civilization and he hid there it was the place where he was made the wilderness was one place where he was made again you see it all through scriptures that men were separated in unpleasant places read your bible and see prophets who god made to sleep on one side of the bed have you read that read of prophets that god made to mix animal dung read of prophets who were made to marry prostitutes after suffering to keep themselves for decades god said the nature of my dealing with you will necessitate you marrying a prostitute so long are you hearing what i'm saying i know that many of you may not appreciate this teaching but this is the kind of teaching that will make you powerful hallelujah mysteriously at a point in my life i've shared my story when i was diagnosed with a fungal infection i prayed every prayer i know how to pray let me tell you if you say i didn't have faith you are joking i had the, the whole faith in the world they took me from hospital to hospital to hospital to hospital took samples of my head i became an object of experiment in that darkness i began to feel the pain of what it means to have an seemingly it was they couldn't find out what was wrong that's the painful part i've shared with you the story my mom has been here when she had to use iron sponge what you used to scrub the back of your pot huh? that's what was used on my head it's called the furnace of affliction that's why when some people come out of that furnace nothing moves them again you just shout and they are looking at you after i went see look let me a sign let me tell you a proof that you are passing through that what made you cry yesterday makes you laugh today you think about it somebody just says are you going to sleep with me as before for the money and you laugh they carry your money and go and they say there's no food and you say lord i give you glory you sit down in the midst of fire and you lie down and sleep you and the fire have become one the bible says you walk through it have you heard what i'm saying a time comes in the furnace of affliction where all your fears happen to you and there is nothing to fear again the fear of lack of membership happened the fear of lack of money happened the fear of the carryover happened at the end of it when you say god you are faithful there is no strings attached 
You suspected the relationship could break. Yes, it broke. But in all, you have learned to be strong. Look, let me tell you. That, that's the secret of courage. You see some men go as if the devil, even the devil doesn't know how to disturb them again. Because he doesn't know which part of their life he will touch. Satan, Satan is not a fool. I've taught you this. He will touch your finances and see your reaction. If you do audition, he won't touch it again. Because it means it doesn't matter to you. Then he will touch your health. There is an aspect of your life you will touch. The way you will react, the devil will sing praise and worship and dance around and say, I found it. I found it. For many of us, every party touches you shout. And so God says, no, you are a babe. You may be the president of your ministry, but that furnace of affliction touches every area of your life until you become dead. A dead man doesn't have feelings again. So they just call you and say, Mr. Man, your car had a ghastly motor accident and you laugh. You say, please, can I, can we continue what we are discussing? And people say, it's like you didn't hear me. Your 2.5 million car just crashed. You say, Lord, I give you praise. Let's continue. The fullness of affliction has done something to you. You are not a pure human being again. Something spiritual has altered your humanity. It has made you strong. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Absolutely. This is the kind of fullness of affliction that can make women to carry their dead children. They say, Madam, your child just died. And they look and tears are coming out of their eyes. And they are saying, Lord, you are faithful. When is the burial date? And you are saying, what sort of insensitive person? No, 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 no. The opposite of what I'm telling you is excessive emotionalism. And that's what the, the system of darkness is doing. So people send every picture on Facebook and Twitter. You are angry. You, you snap yourself and say, I'm angry. And then five minutes later, you eat and say, now yam has come. You see, that, that bad attitude is as a result of lack of the fullness of affliction. There is a way you are built. They look at you and they say, after next week, they are coming to pack up your ministry and you laugh. Say, My God is faithful. You become unperturbed. You are not touched by anything. May God take us to that realm. If you don't get to that realm, worry alone will kill you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you do not get to that realm, I guarantee you, worry will kill you. Have you seen men who just sit down on their veranda and die? Have you seen people like that? They just sit down, bring me a stool and they sit down and die. A man will go to a mango tree and put rope by himself, right? And put the rope from under up and hang himself. Ready? Go and lift the rope and hang himself on a tree. The fullness of affliction makes you a spiritual man. Please hear me. It makes you a true spiritual man. If you have never cried, you have not gone through the fullness of affliction. I guarantee you, you have been passing through AC and the rest. The fullness of affliction will bring tears in your eyes. You will sit down one day and the whole world will change. You, you will not find value in anything. One day you will sit down and you will look at your lecturer. As he's teaching, you are thinking as if you are 70 years old. You are just thinking about life. When that happens to you, you are going through a fullness of affliction. You sit down in the office and they even call your name and you cannot answer again. Not because you are depressed, you are thinking about life. You come to a point where nothing else makes meaning to you except His Majesty. Is God speaking to us? As a man of God, you come to a point where five months, nobody, you are praying and fasting and it's during that time, no invitation, no honorarium. Right? At that time, you come to your fellowship and you find three people. Your sister, your uncle, the other guy who is coming to beg you. Those are the three people that are around. Yet, you are making tremendous progress in the spirit. And you do not understand. The fullness of affliction. You stand to preach the generator spoils. Everything scatters. Your ego has been stung. On top of that, you pray for somebody who is sick and the person doesn't get healed. And they say, Pastor, I, this thing you are teaching us, we are not getting it. You come to a point where 
you just play songs you play hymns and you just sit down everything remember all those country music this world is not my home you just sit down people say why you are, i mean life doesn't make sense hear me don't just laugh it's the fullness of affliction don't think it's happening because of lack of faith if no one has taught you rejoice when you are going through those things because sooner or later is a proof that you must arrive somewhere your tears and expressions of pain do not necessarily reflect unbelief god taught me this god taught me i didn't read it in any book god himself taught me that the fullness of affliction is the school of is part of the curriculum in the school of the spirit no matter how anointed you are i give you a guarantee under the name of the lord jesus christ you must pass through that school for you to be an approved man that badge you don't buy it you don't bribe your way through it the badge is a scar a scar is a sign that your wound has healed it's also a sign that there was once a wound let no man trouble me for i bear i went through it don't think I dropped the classes in the spirit. I went to it. God told you that you are going to become a financial prosperity giant. Get set for times of hunger. Let me tell you. A day will come the heavens will shut on purpose. Please hear me. If you like tight fire. Some of us that tight fire brigade fearful tight. Lord watch it all. I'm dropping this thing. If the heaven doesn't. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Listen, there was a time I gave everything that I had. Nothing was happening. I've just said you, I could not afford a suit. Let me tell you, and I feared God. I used to go for ministrations. I will never forget one time I went for a ministration. Rain beat me. It was time for the ministration. No car to pick me. Right? The church is, uh, is around. It's is not too far from here. This secondary school. Somewhere there. One church that invited me. It was raining. And they were ringing my phone. They didn't. That time there was no protocol. No nothing. But I had prayed and fasted. And I got up. I said, Lord, no matter what it is everywhere was a pool of water and it was muddy i came out held my bible and i started praying in tongues let me tell you i said i'm going there i was praying i said lord i pass through it with joy a day will come people will hear me when i got there to make matters worse it was steve strings that saw me coming and he ran out with an umbrella to help me and bring me in when i got to the church they made me to stay outside so that they would arrange a seat for me to sit down there was no seat when i got there they were acting all kinds of drama and they were laughing and then after everything they whispered to me that please i have 15 minutes i should think of how to patch the time so that i can i can i can be snappy about it it's called the fullness of affliction three days fasting not not nonsense fasting six to six with proper spiritual exercises to go for it's called the fullness of affliction Many of you have grace, but nobody is honoring you. A day will come, they will honor you. Don't run too fast. If you jump classes, life will bring you back. There were times I preached, there was no... After the preaching, come Sam. They said, uh, my brother. Ah! You said you are a young man where? They used to call me Bro Josh then. Not Apostle. Apostle Fire. Bro Josh. Where? where ah, you are a young man. Uh, may God honor you. The way you are going. You will be a bright young man. May God bless you. I just stop a bike outside. Bike! And I climb happily and I go home. No honorarium, no nothing. It was the fullness of affliction. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? It was building me so that my motivation behind the pursuit of God would not be money and honorariums. I didn't have money to buy a shirt. I used to go somewhere. There was one BLW guy. He always used to dry clean his suit and keep for me. So when there's any ministration, I'll run to him and collect. And then one of my friends, I'll go and collect his shoes. That's how I would join everything. My younger sister posted one of the pictures of one of the crusades. And I looked at myself. It was as if I entered inside 
I entered inside the tavolin. I was lean to nonsense. I had fasted my life out. Lean until I became, I became like, look, don't just laugh because it's happening to you. And the devil wants to deceive you to stop the process. Pass through it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Pass through it. Let people mock you. You're a pretty lady. Nobody is even looking at you. You know that this is not the issue of demons. Demons have been dealt with. When will my change come? God says for others they can go, but you. He said, God, what did I do to you? Many of you have been asking God. God is saying, uh uh, it's because you are different. Stay behind. The devil can tell you there is an RNG we can do for you. There's one brother that is roaming around looking for a wife. If you are interested, we can we can come in and pretend as it is all those all those things people use those strategies and they compromise hallelujah they compromise say i will not compromise say one more time i will not compromise job said though he slay me yet will i praise him he said all the days of my appointed time I remember the day I got one proper honorarium. I mean proper. You know what I mean by proper. Something sizable enough for you to smile and say, this looks like the anointing I carry. That day I went back and I was smiling and God told me to sew it. I said, come on, Lord. Abba. And I did gladly. Listen. Part of what some of you receive tonight is not an anointing to go and start a church. Or to prove to your fellowship that I have arrived is going to be a lonely road. It's already happening to some of us. Right? You graduated and you finished school and you are smiling and you drop your, you know that everybody can help you but nothing has happened. Brothers and sisters, don't let men look at you and think that it's because you are lazy and foolish. There is a dealing of the spirit. Hallelujah. Come, sweet and come. Let me tell you come on, come on, come on, Let me tell you something about this lady. This lady is a graduate of banking and finance. Are you seeing this? She's a graduate of banking and finance and has been in a dealing with this with the spirit. She left Asaba and she's going to be in Zaria for the next, probably the next, maybe close to a year, because there is a prophetic dealing of the spirit that is doing in her life. Are you getting me? certified and approved by her mother it takes crazy men to carry the anointing of the spirit against popular status quo praise the lord banking and finance with even french again yet for the excellency of that which she believes is locked up in her spirit let's see. let me tell you if you want to be like everybody you will suffer like everybody if you are afraid of being different because of what you just try to be different the accusations are fierce everybody will say we are not doing it like this so don't be a stupid person wisdom is profitable to direct when god is telling you go left all prophets like the ones in the bible would say go right it's always been right god will say you go left it's a lonely road but it's the fullness of affliction god is speaking to some of us here there are some of us seated here inside and outside you trekked from your house or from your whatever your office or from school to come here and if you don't get boss you are trekking back don't complain see it as the school there is a lecturer talking to you in the spirit pay attention are you hearing what i'm saying there's no money coming from anywhere brother if there is no money relax get a cup of water and drink and smile and know that the world will celebrate you there is nothing happening in my life right now that is surprising me i'm only grateful about it hallelujah sister when god is done with you then you will know why he trained you when you see the kind of man he brings and the responsibility that is waiting you will know why your training was different are you getting what I'm saying? Who is God speaking to? Many of us are seated here, although we are smiling. Please play my notes. Listen, we are smiling, 
but there are wounded soldiers sitting looking at me there are many of you this is how you held yourself spiritually to come here is you you pack yourself and the remaining of you and came for koinonia a lady came they brought her in from kaduna gas exploded on her gas cooking gas exploded on her burnt her face burnt her limbs and i was calling this lady and she said when can we come and see you i said this morning i thought they were joking by seven o'clock the whole family they carried themselves and they came they carried the lady when i looked at that lady and she was declaring the faithfulness of god beautiful lady turned to nonsense as a result of gas gas burnt her her feet and she loves god right many of you are touching your face nothing is happening to you <laughs> hallelujah do you know when i sat down and i prayed with this lady while i was praying with her her bond hands she held my hands and as she was crying i could see these ladies you you could sense what she was saying i'm not giving up lord you are faithful when i finished praying she said i should take her she said she wants to walk by herself and she told her mom she said she wants to show the devil she wants to put the devil to shame that's what she said and this girl got up step by step we we're going and she was walking Tomorrow you will see this woman raising wheelchairs on crusade grounds. When she sees people with wheelchairs, the school she passed through created a memory. And that memory brings the anointing. That's why sometimes you see me sit down during miracle services. I've gone through some pain enough in my life. We say we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched. When was he touched? During the furnace of affliction. There are many preachers who are so innocent from what is happening to members. They don't know what is happening, so they don't know how to preach. They don't know how to love. They don't know how to be there. I've suffered hunger. There are times that people come to meet me and say, Apostle, as I am like this, I've not eaten. And I look and I say, I understand. No matter what it is, don't give up. They are trying to fight tears in their eyes. I say, don't give up. Don't be afraid. I told you crying is allowed. In the furnace of affliction, crying is allowed cry and wipe your tears and pass through your father looks at you and says you claim there are people here among us one of us here was disowned by his parents completely there are a number of us like that on account of our faith and our, i mean disowned for real they have been on their own there are students here who are sourcing school fees by themselves every one naira comes by faith i speak a word to you don't you think god has rejected you you are passing through what will make you a principality in your time that's how great men are made. i fasted for many days with nothing to break the fast but i knew god was faithful hallelujah god that's why today if you like bring 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 a bottle of drink that is one million and give me i'll drink it drop it and continue what i'm doing because i've passed through a furnace of affliction that gives me the appreciation to love people at every level are you hearing what i'm saying affliction it makes you to love people i went through things in my life i would never want anybody to go through it creates the true spirit of love this army are men and women that for now let me tell you all over the earth they are not manifesting yet brothers and sisters many of them are still passing through the furnace of affliction some of you it was your pain and tears that brought you to koinonia there is there is an evil in your family waiting and you are the one who is trying to emerge and you who is trying to bring your family into victory and deliverance the devil is is making them walk against you is that true some of you after this koinonia you are going back home and the spirits have gone in advance to manipulate and orchestrate trouble some of you as you are reaching home is with a slap they welcome you they say you went to the guy's house and be keep quiet it's not time to defend yourself receive the slap or realize that a principality a reformer is on his way to rise who is god speaking to a reformer is on his way to rise there are many of you people offend you and they do nasty things but god tells you get up and go and apologize to them and you say god for what i think god says that's not get up go and apologize to them get up and go and apologize to them 
there are times God will carry tell you to get your best gift and give your worst enemy it's a furnace of affliction it's a place of beauty are you hearing what I'm saying you have the capacity to wax an album you are about to wax the album and God said you are on your own you are on your own with that album he said instead carry the money and go and sow it to somebody and remain ha. I wish what I was saying were a lie but it's true you will pass through it. Some of you are going through it right now. You will pass through it. Brothers and sisters, the first crusade we went for, I think we were, I don't know if we were up to 50 or more than 50. But I preached my life out. We healed those we could heal and we gave Jesus praise. Praise the Lord. There is a prophetic word upon your life. That is why your life is the way it is going. Please listen to me. I'm speaking to you. There is a prophetic word. Some of you have written jam for years. Nothing has happened. Your colleagues have gone ahead of you and even graduated. Don't worry. There is a hand that is moving you. You may not see it. You may cry through the night. But I'm speaking to you. There is a hand that is moving you. There is an anointing you will soon encounter in the place of your pain. Where, where you sit down and there is nothing to do. All of a sudden you will find an anointing. There is a squeezing out, a pressing, like what my knee will call it, a breaking of the outer man and a release of the spirit. There is a breaking. You are, you are rising to a realm in the spirit. Sister, continue the prayers. Continue the Bible study. Don't worry. You may look like a fool. Continue. I spoke to a woman who told me that there was a time she was using crown, not oil. God is my groundnut oil. You know groundnut oil. To rub on her body. And she said, it will be great and it will be better for me one day. You want to be great? The furnace of affliction is your passport. This message may not be pleasant. It's a series we're taking. It's called the Imagines. We're looking at the making of reformers. The mystery of the furnace of affliction where men are made it is the place you will cry your cry till there is no tears to cry again it is the place you will call for help and heaven is silent it is the place where your challenges keep multiplying before your face by the day it comes to a point where as the mountains surround jerusalem that's how everything has surrounded you where you are praying for something to be better another thing comes up the Bible says they kept mounting themselves on Job. First, his animals and everything died. Lightning came and scattered his building. Then he was told that he's still one report after the other. And Job just sat on the ground. He said, naked I came. And he began to speak a lot of things. Let me tell you something. The furnace of affliction will get you to a point where you can't talk again. Your silence becomes your prayer. And God hears it. Because that is the time you will be talking the loudest. You sit down. You can't open your mouth to say God is unfaithful. But to say God is faithful becomes difficult. And it's not a sign of unbelief. Hallelujah. That's the point. Where everything in your life does not seem to work. Yet you are making spiritual progress. Yet you are growing spiritually. You are suffering from a sickness that you are healing others of. You lay hands on them and the power of God gets them free. But you have prayed and fasted for months. And this thing does not go. I bring you a matured message to the body of Christ. There is a making of reformers across the entire earth. These men, their dealings look harsh. But my brothers, let me tell you something. Do you know how the eagle trains the eaglet to, to fly? It picks it up and throws it away and just allows it if you do and it keeps moving around and then eventually it comes back picks it up takes it back and throws it away that's why the eagle does not just fly it soars when other birds are moving around the eaglets when i was an eaglet i went to a lot there are things you go through in life that kills fear somebody looks at you and holds a gun and says i will kill you all of a sudden you remember how many 
in my life too many things do you know why i don't fear cars jam me one huh you see all the things that have happened in my life Abba. no human being born of a woman can kill me i'm telling you this it's not pride you don't know i told you i've entered car where the armed robbers were shooting I, I, okay no they didn't shoot we we're coming from portacourt right armed robbers i was sitting on c2 luxurious bus you know c2 the one that the, the driver is down you are the one in front there are perils you go through in life that make you mature. That's what releases the anointing. Life has squeezed you so much, there's nothing to squeeze there again. You are a dead man in Christ. You have no reputation of yourself. And then, when you never expect it, the light will shine. It will never happen when you... Joseph never saw in a vision that by the next day he will be the prime minister. Probably he now said, oh Lord, let me be in this prison for five more years. Five years is enough for me. Not knowing that that was the last night. He would have been grateful if he was told that he would stay just five more years. But that night, he was at the entrance of another realm, leaving the furnace of affliction forever. Hallelujah. I've shared with you how the Lord instructed me to trek from that place near Chicken Republic till aviation, I was trekking like a fool on the streets of Zaria. If I meet you with that madness and I say I want to marry you, what will you go and tell your father? You say, Daddy, there is a, a madman, there is an idiot that claims God is calling him. Your father has enough, my daughter. Right? Shege barata kalabaya. Lord, for you, I will do it. I may look like a madman, but so be it. Look, it takes unusual people. The fullness of affliction makes you a human being plus something else. Right? And that's what you need. A human being plus an anointing. A human being plus a grace. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. Let me stop here because of our time. The making. The making. There is a making, brothers and sisters. There are many of us who have been bereaved. There are some of us, a lot has happened to you. There are some of us, what you are seeing in the spirit and what is happening in your life are east and west. I bring you a word. It is a furnace of affliction. If it has an entrance, it has an exit. You may walk through it so slow, but the day you will come out, you, you will be without information. You will, you will step into an anointing you will never recover from. You will step into a level of grace you will never recover from. The day Jesus appeared to me, I was not prepared for that visitor. I just loved him. I wanted him with my life. And then he appeared to me. I perceive in my spirit that there are some of us who are coming to the end of those seasons of affliction. They have lasted years. You have done, let me tell you, when that season comes to an end, you don't need connection. Everything works for you, including your enemies. It's a sign that that season has ended. And so God stamps it upon your life. Jesus died and was in the grave. All of a sudden, while they were discussing his death, Jesus the Christ, he got up, he was on his way to Emmaus, and two people were saying, have you heard? Ah, this weekend was a bad weekend for the disciples, so Jesus died, and the man said, really? He died, brothers and sisters, but he only died for three days. What you are passing through will not kill you. If he would have killed you, you would have died since. This is how you know it's a furnace of affliction. Because in it, you never die. You go through everything that can kill you. But when all the dust settles, you are still standing. This is a message for you to preach to some of our parents. They have done their best. Some of you right now, you are the ones feeding your families. Although you are students. It's you that sends money. Mommy, take 2K. And your mother is saying, Lord, when will you change our story? Tell her, Mommy... There is a reform arising in this house. That is the reason. Like the blood that was put. There is a mark that is upon this family. As, as, as we are sitting. There are mega ministries that are rising. But listen. It will not rise by claiming. Your tears is what will qualify you to climb that altar. That's what will make your altar sacred. That's what will make your anointing uncommon. It is good to receive impartations. But in the furnace of affliction, you dig your own well by yourself. 
you dig that well until you find the water. We are going to pray. There is nothing that you are passing through that is forever. I want you to know this. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you pass through it, you will know that God is a miracle worker. When you pass through it, you will know that God is mighty. Rise up on your feet and let's pray. This is how the reformers will emerge. The first dimension of the dealings of the spirit is the mystery that is shrouded in the furnace of affliction. You will pass through pain. You will pass through rejection. You will pass through criticism. They will misunderstand you. You don't need to defend yourself. You will pass through all kinds of things. The Bible says do not count it as though it's a strange thing. When you pass through fiery trials. Lift your voice and begin to pray koinonia. Everyone pray. I draw strength. I draw strength from the journey ahead. I draw strength for the journey ahead. Pray. I draw strength in the name of the Lord Jesus. I draw strength for the days of criticisms. I draw strength for the days of weaknesses. The days when there is no result in my life. The days when there is no result in my church. The days when there is no result in my career. I draw strength to face the carryovers that I have. I draw strength to face the mockery. I draw strength to face this pain, this sickness in my body. I've been married for five years. No child. I draw strength. Go ahead and pray. He said, and Elijah went in the strength of that bread. 40 days journey. And Elijah went in the strength of that bread. Pray. There is a lady and a guy that the power of God will touch outside. Please bring them. I want to talk to them. A lady outside and a gentleman two of them the anointing of god will come mighty upon them mighty upon them and sisters it pays to walk with the Lord it pays to walk with the Lord you know why many people never carry the presence of God we have deceived people for a long time that there is nothing to do to carry the presence of God nothing can be further from that truth. there is a huge price a huge price to carry the presence of God those who don't walk in the reality, unfortunately, are the ones who teach about it the most. And they teach all kinds of theories and grammar. And deceive people in the body of Christ that there's nothing to be done. Just believe. Are you joking? Everything that is of value has a price, brothers and sisters. Not everything in the kingdom is a gift. You want to command signs and wonders, there is a huge price. The price is death. The price is death. The price is not negotiation. Only dead men carry the glory of God. The glory of God is not pure. Only dead men carry His glory. Only dead men carry His glory. Ask that I declare, Lord, I bring your presence into the lives of these people. May their lives never be the same. I stretch my hands over them. I declare that this course that has followed your family, I bring it to an end. 
The Bible says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. It's not theory. It's not a book you write. It's a reality. It's not something you explain. I told us that the Bible says it's a year of trial. Remember the teaching. That there will be less talk. Less talk. God, God has said it again. God told me that there will be less talk. There's too much noise making in the body of Christ. Noise making. Excellent communications that carry no life, no power. So people go back with their problems. They keep getting intelligent in their brains. And no result to justify it. That's why we are singing that song. When his light comes upon you. The worst is that they will criticize you. But no one will deny the finger of God. Listen, it's not hard. It's because we men of God have lied to you. We gather you and make it look as if it's a fortune to get the hand of God. No, sir. There is a price. The price for God's presence is not wearing suits. The price for God's presence is not learning Greek and Hebrew. Please hear me, especially if you're a pastor here. The price for God's presence is not protocol and gathering people and feeling like a big man. I say it again. The price for the glory is death. Except the corn of wood falls to the ground. Anyone can preach what he wants to preach about it. But brother, if you want to be used by God in this generation, I tell you the price is death. You don't, you don't do part-time with God and get his glory. Part-time nonsense is the reason why many people never find God. There is a search. You seek him like a treasure that you will die if you don't find. Not a treasure that you do something else if you don't find him. You seek him as a treasure that you will die if you don't find him. So don't let somebody tell you every man I can get to God. No, possibilities are defined by the sacrifices upon every man's altar. So don't let anyone fool you and say what any man can do, any other man can do. Theoretically true. But practically, my brother, no, sir. It's like saying any man can become a professor. You didn't lie. But any, everybody will not be a professor. There is a price. One of the things I want you to learn tonight is please may God grant you the grace to respect anointed people when you see them. Do you know why many people bring curses upon their lives? When a man of God has a track record with God, listen, let me, let me give you a, I don't know why I'm talking along this line. If this is all the encouragement before I begin to minister to you, some of the yokes upon the lives of people are not caused by they are not caused by generational causes they are caused by foolishness are we together now yeah. when when you trivialize what god is doing in a man you trivialize the investment that god has made upon that man and that grace never blesses you you open up yourself to woes and tragedies for instance there are some of our family members right now the problem they are crying for that they can up from city to city paying money for prayer praying money for deliverance paying money for counseling can be received freely if only a heart of honor and humility is in place when I was on my way coming back I saw many people sitting down outside and just smiling admiring the crowds of people coming and honestly not because I'm the one preaching I said my God can a man be this foolish Will I ever see the presence and the glory of God close to me and not jump at it? There are people who started traveling day before yesterday. They don't even know where to stay. And they are just more than grateful they are in the presence of God. And there are others who are a minute walk away. It usually is like that. That's why people never receive. There are people, while I'm talking now, they are scattered all around Jesus. Say, wow, this guy... Maybe some will say he has charm. Go and get it. Get the charm that produces this result. You think it's easy to get a charm? May 
God grant you the fruit that when you see God in a place and a thing, you plunge in and receive. Not that you sit down be a spectator and allow your life to waste away. This year is not the year you should play with any opportunity God gives. Because on the other side of God's presence is a fierce, fierce 2007 waiting for disobedient people. Like Goshen and Egypt. Are you hearing the cries of the glory? Are you hearing the lamentation, the hopelessness? People are confused. They don't even know what to do with their lives again. Charms are not working again. Jobs are not working again. Everything is going on. And God calls a solemn assembly so that he will step in and bless you. Very important. Forever Yahweh Yahweh, Lord, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Sing it one more time. I look to Yahweh, Yahweh. I want to start my teaching tonight with a simple question. Brothers and sisters, help me answer this question. Why do people, why do born again families, why do communities and territories and individuals continue to walk in a life of perpetual failure, perpetual oppression, in spite of all the opportunities? And the anointings that are available is a tragic situation to have men and women well-meaning believers who love and fear God sincerely never have anything work well in their life I identified a few reasons and I want you to learn this very quickly because we are going to pray Please, can you take this anointing? Just, can you take it and keep it here? Is that okay? Please, it's, it's nothing fetish. I'm just, it's just an instruction. Just, just soak the glory. Just drop it here. Thank you. Listen, why do these things happen to people? Number one, very quick. The first reason I identified and I wrote it here is it may be a long sentence but just listen carefully the conscious exclusion of Jesus in their lives and affairs the conscious exclusion of Jesus not God not God Jesus in their lives and affairs the number one reason why certain people will never have a testimony the conscious exclusion of Jesus in their lives and their affairs. I don't mean they are not born again. That's not what I'm saying. The conscious exclusion, like you want to have a serious meeting, then you tell somebody, please, can you go outside? The conscious, willful exclusion of Jesus in their lives and affairs. Are we together now? You see, there is this arrogance and over-dependence of our intellectualism. I'm not against intellectual prowess. You should know that. I'm an advocate of mental development and so on and so forth. But listen to me. Over-dependence on our abilities, our connection, our education, our wisdom, business skills etc 
these things make us to consciously exclude Jesus in our lives usually we include Jesus only when we think we are not trained enough for what we are supposed to do oh I went to school doesn't Jesus know I'm a master's holder Jesus wait this is the issue of intelligence when we get to spiritual issues we bring you and then he steps out because he's, he's a very very gentle man pride over dependence on our ability Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 and 7 says trust in the Lord with all your heart listen and lean not on your own understanding right the next verse says in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your path verse 7 says do not be wise be not wise in your own eyes it says fear the Lord and turn away from evil what is the evil depending on your strength let me tell you why God is humbling so many people this arrogance of being self-made self-made degree holder self-made doctor self-made professor self-made millionaire self there is nobody that is self-made everybody is spirit assisted whether they know it or will accept it or not are we together the first reason why many people never get God's assistance over dependence on our ability oh my power and my might I built this great ministry I have sons and daughters to show for it I built so 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 and so I'm an intelligent man everybody tells me that attitude excludes you will never find the hand of God that way hear what I'm saying you may not like what I'm saying but just pay attention over dependence on our abilities when the miracle happens then we religiously come and say Lord I give you glory but even you you know you are just doing the testimony so that men will hear what you have done not because you were sincere with giving God glory it's God's will that I may decrease that she alone may increase huh? all my qualification all my business acumen all my parenting skills all my CEO mentality when you come before God you pack those things box them and drop them and glorify his name is the reason why many cannot worship him is the reason why many cannot do anything because to them they are superstars and everywhere including a church is the stage apostle joshua selman did you see him as he came did you see how people were running up and down and we stupidly take god out of our ministry you see that yeah that's what a lot of people have come you left seeking god and became a ceo of a church and you started running it by yourself that's why it's killing you let me tell you something with God one thing I know about God is not that I'm told God is a jealous God I don't know how you want to interpret it use Hebrew and Greek is still the same thing God is a jealous God the jealousy of God is the dimension of him that fiercely fights anything that attempts to displace him ask Lucifer what happened to him there was war even in heaven. The conscious exclusion. Oh, I'm healthy. Why should I pray? I'm healthy. Why should I fast? So we have all this fire brigade approach. Only when things go wrong, we now come and bribe God with money. We bribe God with tight. We bribe God with our shoe. And the time we wrap something and say, God, just take and solve my problem. And God is saying, am I that cheap to you? Is this all you know about me? Oh, I'm a business tycoon. I'm a multi-millionaire. I have, I have all kinds of companies running everywhere. And then, by the time your wisdom fools you, you now come and say, oh God, God, you know, I, I, you said you're a tycoon. Tycoons are intelligent people. You continue. Listen, when other men are priding in themselves, you better know why God blesses you. And be outspoken about it. I'm a testimony 
of the love and the faithfulness of God. Are we together? Conscious exclusion of God. The embarrassment, still on that same point. The embarrassment of the need for assistance and dependence of God, on God. The embarrassment that comes with acknowledging your need to be helped. There are many people who like to say, nobody helped me. Nobody helped me. I did it by myself. Nobody helped me. I rose from rags to riches by myself. I became a millionaire by myself. I became anointed by myself. No man of God laid hands on me. I was rolling under the floor in the presence of God. Then an angel appeared to me and said, Son, stand up. From today, I anoint you over this and that and we talk those foolish things. Most people find it embarrassing to say their lives are a product of many contributions. We think that the moment you acknowledge, ah, at this point in my life, God used a genie to help me. At this point in my life, God used Sam to help me. It makes you cheap. So we rather trivialize all the help and we join God in the equation. Okay, God, I gave my life to you. That's all right. That's your own honor. Enjoy that one. But this one, wisdom, I, I have it. A man can receive nothing until it is given to him. Have you read that? A man can receive nothing. That's why many people, the lady will come and say, look, by God's grace, so it's not pride, but am I not beautiful? And you'll find out that you never marry. Nobody will even tell you good money. And you are wondering why. With all this beauty, you see that the brothers are blind, they leave me, they are not blind. But there is a God that gives husband and wife. And you have excluded that God out of your life because you think you are okay. Or a brother who got a small job, 150,000. I say, God forbid, I can't marry any kind of lady. I've mean, I mean, I, I paid my price. I have 150,000 naira job. Let me describe the kind of lady. And God says, This is a rich, a stupid, stupid boy who does not know how God assists men to rise. Then they now threaten you that they are going to downsize people. And they, you, you are shocked to find out that although you are, you are brilliant, your name is there. You are about to go. God will say, use your power and your might and keep yourself there. Total dependence on Jesus. Outspoken dependence on Jesus. Not that you say they know. We don't know. Say it. Let your life show it. Let your ringtone show it. Let everything show it. You know this Christian thing, I don't want to put it on my head. You better put it on your head. That is the symbol of safety. You better put it on your head. In this wicked world now, put it on your head clearly so that you'll be free. Are we together? I don't know about you, but I depend on him. I depend on him. If God does not assist me, no man can assist me. If God does not help me, he said, I will lift up my eyes onto the hill. From when, how can I write the equation of my life and then add God? I will not even add God. He's the Alpha Omega. If there is anything to add, maybe it's me that somewhere, I, he will even allow me to add and say, okay, and my addition is my alignment. I will tell that. Please, I want you to repent tonight. Especially some of us here and there that have results here and there in our lives. In business, like that gentleman who came out smiling that he, he made one million. You see that? It's a wonderful testimony. You can now stand up and say, no, I must get my own one million. And then start the journey of pain in your life. If God does not give a man anything, you can have it. You can't have it. You have to understand this. That's why people don't get saved. Let me tell you. That's why people don't get saved. And Jimmy, if you point someone here and tell him there is a multi-million naira business in Abuja you want to connect it with, will he be too busy? He won't be too busy. The wife will say, honey, but I thought we were supposed to have a time together. I said, which time? I will slap you now. You know, with the money, we'll have a time together. Let's go to Abuja. 
because you consider it to be valuable. Valuable. So when the house of God becomes something you have to advise yourself to go, it's a sign you are excluding God out of your life. Are we together now? He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go. He didn't go alone. Let us go. Let us go. I've said it again. Please, if you're a parent here, hear me. As much as God grants you grace, involve your children in your conviction. Especially if your children are as small as this are, are, are little children. Are we together? Don't leave the children with nanny and say they used to make noise. They should make noise. It's better to make noise in the presence of God than keep them at home and allow a strange spirit enter them and begin the journey of pain in your life. Let them come and sleep here. Nobody's complaining. I'd like you to pray one minute while you are seated and say, Lord, you are not one of those important things in my life. I repent for just acting you. After doing everything I think is the reason why my life is moving, I now add you to feel spiritual. Lift your voice and say, I repent. I repent of that pride. I repent of that pride. Kabbalah Kosatai. I acknowledge you. Listen. The Bible says, except the Lord builds a house. Except the Lord builds a ministry. Except the Lord builds a family. Except the Lord builds a business. They labor in vain. He didn't say they will not do it. They labor in vain. Pouring water in the basket. Pouring water in the basket. It will never fool. Pour the water in the whole world in a basket. No miracle will make it fool. So that's the first reason. Still on point one. Let's look at a scripture God showed me. Isaiah 31. Verse 1 to 3. Media is it possible? Can we have it? Isaiah 31. Verse 1 to 3. God gave me a sound warning that I should give it to us. Not like a threat or something. But I think it's an advice that is very instrumental to us. Isaiah 31. From verse 1 to 3. Let's just hurry up before they find it. The danger of trying to use the world's way of doing things to get God's results. Are we together now? Still part of point one is an addition I noted here and I must explain it. The danger of using the world's formula and expecting God's result. It does not happen. The world has its way of getting money. The world has its way of parenting. The world has its way of getting fame. Listen. The world has its way of, li of, of living long. The world has its way of understanding. When you come to God, the kingdom of God is an entirely different system. The Bible says you are in the world, but not of the world. Right? Isaiah 31, you can write it and go and read it. It says, woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Woe to them that go down to Egypt. Egypt is the place of captivity. The dark world. This includes going to Habalis. Please look up. Let me talk to us. Are you not amazed, Jimmy, at the rate at which people, Christians, run to the village, run to Habalis. We join God and we join a little of something they give you like a belt on your waist. You are still, I don't care even if it's Jesus that is written on it. A Habalist is a Habalist. They gave you something. They said during the exam, you should just take it. You have to stand by one in the afternoon. Exactly one. Take it with your right hand. It's nonsense. I don't care even if you are reciting whatever. Be careful. Everything that is of God is consistent with this one. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Very, very important. Woe to them who go down to Egypt for help. God has his way of doing things. You want to build a house. The world has its way of building a house. The kingdom has its way of building a house. You want to access wealth and prosperity. The world has its way of doing things. Many believers go down to Egypt. And we try to access help. Whereas there is no help in Egypt. For 430 years they were in Egypt. There was no help. Until they left Egypt and they began to walk. 
Are we together? I'm not against enlightenment. But some of these, some of these junk materials we read all around that attempt to suggest facts and figures that negate the word of God, yet we adopt them and we call it civilization. Please look at me, look at me. Let me have your attention. I don't care. The word of God transcends every generation, whether you are young, whether you are old, there are irrefutable truths that defines the standards of God. Say amen. Woe to them who go down to Egypt for them. You want to build a house. You are putting yourself under pressure. The world says go to the bank and go and collect loan. Correct? Go and collect loan. And you don't inquire from God. You run and go to the bank. They give you a loan. The next day an armed robber comes and puts a gun. And says you better bring out that loan. I was in the bank. Bring everything out. And then you have two loans to pay. The one you need to build the house. And all of that. And the journey starts. And at the end of your life. You have high blood pressure. You have stroke. The world says if you want to keep a wife. Beat her. Beat her once. Let her see you beat her, then she will know you are man enough. That's the world's way. Now you are born again, but those advices are still coming once in a while. Your uncle says, that advice I gave you, I think he's working. Are we together? The Bible says the divine health is a possibility. I'm not against medicine and all of that, but divine health is a possibility. And for you, you have never tried to stretch your faith for once to believe God and say, I can live here. Are we together? The Bible says favor is possible. The world's version of favor is bribe and corruption. You force it. Go to them who go down to Egypt. There is a way God finances and builds his church. You didn't find out. And so you play gimmicks on people. All kinds of gimmicks on people. And you find out that every Sunday, every Saturday, you are always on deficit. God gave you a child. There is a formula for paying the school fees of the child. Don't complain that there's no money. Go to God and find out. Lord, I was pregnant for nine months. I'm aware that there are women who have not been able to give birth. How did you design funding the destiny of this child? Please hear what I'm saying because this is a very serious issue. How many husbands and wives come together? How many young people, how many leaders sit down and say, look, we are confused. Let's get God in this picture. Lord, we are absolutely confused. We need you to step in. They say, let's deliberate. Then later on, when it gets too hard, they say, let's pray in tongues for five minutes. God, who lied to you that adding God to your life is a minus? Who lied to you that adding God to your business is a minus? Who lied to you, listen, that adding God to your relationship is a minus? Who deceived you that adding God to your church is a minus? Adding God to your friends and driving out the bad ones is a minus. Oh, I don't want to lose him. You better lose him. If, if adding God to his life is what will make him to go, that's a sign that you have been delivered. Please hear what I'm saying. There are people seated hearing me. You have never given your heart to Jesus Christ. You have never. You've had preachers speak again and again. Every time they talk, you just sit down outside and say, Am I was touched by See how this guy is really talking about God. Now, brothers and sisters, I don't mean to scare you, but let me just tell you one truth that we have not had for a long time. Hellfire is free. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are people there. Some left this morning. As you were coming for Koinonia, some people left. They are there right now as we speak. Preach whatever you want to preach. But I can tell you one thing. And it's very, very so you can be as arrogant as you want to be. 
and say I'm an atheist. I went to America and I spent two, two years. I went to Harvard. I, that's all right. You are permitted to carry your foolishness for as long as it lasts. But I can tell you one thing. Only a fool will say in his heart, there is no God. Please hear me. Some of us are parents and I say all due respect. There are many fathers and there are many mothers, some listening to me by radio. Your family is most diving because as the priest of the home, you have refused to bring God. When your wife is praying, you now say, honey, make sure you pray for me. You just enter the blanket. No. Let me challenge any young man here planning to marry. If you are not more spiritual than the woman you want to marry, you are in trouble. You better catch up. Join prayer ban on Tuesday. Join have a personal prayer time and double up. And I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Your spirituality defines everything. I wish above all things that you prosper even to the degree that your soul prospers. What shall it profit a man, the Bible says, if you gain the whole world, if you have all the ministries in the world and at the end of it, lose your soul. Praise the Lord. So there are people seated hearing me you really need to ask yourself this question. Um, have I been saved? Am I born again? I know I came for healing. I came for a miracle. I know I'm 65 years old. I know I'm 12 years old. Are you born again? Have you really brought Jesus to your life? An open invitation to say, Lord, I'm tired of mismanaging my life. My intelligence is failing me woefully. I come to you. I come to you. As a child will run to his father. Right? The prodigal son came to himself. And said, look, how many hired servants has my father? I will arise and I will go to my father. And I will say, father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me now as one of your servants. And the Bible says, while he saw him. Coming afar off, he ran, embraced him, kissed him. And restored and put back the seed. The evil in the world is too much for any man to be living his life without Christ. That you took beer and drove yourself from Karuna to Zaria is the mercy of God. You keep trying it. One day you just open your eyes and find out you are not in the world. Disrespect for God and his values. I'm going to make an altar call now. We need to make it. The atmosphere is right for an altar call. Two altar calls in one. Please pay attention. Two altar calls. Just carry the lady gently. You are here seated listening to me. Those online, pay attention to Jesus is calling you. The Bible says, Come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It says, Take upon me my yoke and learn of me. For I am lowly in heart. Right? He says, my burden is easy. My yoke is light. The one you are carrying is killing you. Two sets of people. One, those who are saying, man of God, as you are speaking, the Holy Spirit is telling me, I need Jesus. Not I need God. Not I need God. God is many things to many people. There is no other name given unto man by which men must be saved. God does not save men. There is a name. Jesus Jesus are we together this westernization that has made everything called God there are people God is a donkey there are people God is a tortoise there are people God is a small image somewhere looking like something but we are talking about Jesus the name that is above all names when he is lifted then he will draw all men to himself the second category of people who are coming out here are those who are saying man of God Sincerely, I've responded to an altar call, but I cannot say my life is a reflection of the will of God. I don't care about the house of God. I don't care about the things of God. My children should do anything if they want to do. I do anything I want to do. I watch anything I want to watch. I do anything I want to do. Please, let's save time. I'm going to count one to five. Nobody's closing his eyes. There are people in all the overflows scattered around. As you hear my voice, I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come right in front here and say, man of God, I need you to talk to, 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 to pray for me. One. 
run like there's fire on the mountain if you are too big please go back two come and stand and passionately cry before god three passionately cry before god lord i've come to you from the depth of my heart i can't keep playing games with you keep coming are you running leave your friend if he's trying to throw you back there's a spirit in him that will soon be casted out if your friend holds you back i assure you there is a spirit leave him and run and come don't say i came with my girlfriend i came with my boyfriend run to jesus with all your heart keep clapping please motivate them as they're coming man of god is as if you've been talking to me yes you are right you are the one i've been talking to and jesus is calling you rush to him say lord i'm tired I, I can't keep fighting this for long i got admission into abu and i became something else i i became a graduate and i became something else i'm not ashamed i'm coming to you it is like an award ceremony you are not closing your eyes please run to jesus the lord is still telling me there are people in the day that you hear his voice do not harden your heart and stand before him and shame the devil over your destiny shame the devil over your destiny listen many of us standing here are young people one day you are going to be a father one day you are going to be a mother the father and the mother you hate right now that made you got into your lifestyle they had an opportunity when they were young they ignored jesus but embraced education so they became graduates without christ and they married without christ although the wedding was done in the church and the disaster is the values of the kingdom are not reflected in our family the average young man seated here in the next five to ten years he will be married your conviction is what you are going to transfer to your home every stupid man today was a stupid young man correct he married and just wore suit on that stupidity and took it to his home we are sick and tired of a godless society a society that has no respect for god we we are pushing god out and saying look look you know i'm i'm too fine for all this this church thing no addiction is the trend addiction for god outspoken addiction listen i salute you ladies and gentlemen don't come out as if you are going to the graveyard nobody's morning it's a thing of joy i'm about to lead you to make the greatest decision in your life there are many of you years after now you will be leading others ladies you are standing here for the sake of your children one day they will look at you and say mommy thank you for giving your life to jesus when you were 21. thank you for not joining this nonsense that is producing tears there's no magic about a great future you must run to jesus like there's fire on the mountain and for those of us who are sitting down that you are sitting down doesn't mean you should not be here because there are people that are still supposed to be here but while you are seated you must say lord make me serious with you an addiction for you an addiction for you an addiction for you some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears yeah i'm not here to condemn you no no with all the love in my heart if i had my way i would hold every one of you because you have made a decision that will save a generation everyone who rejects christ has implicated his generation because you can only give what you have those of you in front please lift your right hand seriously lift it high to the heavens and say after me lord jesus please say it from your heart say it again lord jesus don't worry you can cry it's all right lord jesus don't baby look at me look at me i love you there is a boy that disturbs you eh? send that boy a text and say joshua selman ask you to send him a text you never come near you again because you love god and god wants to use you hmm? you keep loving god and that boy keeps i don't know who he is drive him far from your life tell him i said so in jesus name huh? so you pray that prayer say after me lord jesus i love you with all my heart this night 
I have heard your word. And I come to you. Asking you to forgive me. Asking you to cleanse me. I believe. I can be better. Than I am now. So I don't fight you again. Come into my heart. It belongs to you. Take everything. That is mine. And make it yours. Use me. For your glory. Every condemnation. Every guilt. Upon my life. Lives now. And forever. In Jesus name. Keep your hands lifted. I want to pray for you. Father. Look at the ones you died for. They have come genuinely and openly. To express before your people. A commitment to love you. And a commitment to live for you. Father, I pray that you honor their sincerity in the name of Jesus. I pray that the Holy Spirit will come upon your life. And from today, the appetite you used to have, you will no longer have it forever. I release grace upon you to drive some people from your life. And I release grace upon you to invite others into your life. I decree and declare that any association, I don't care how long they have been with you. And don't favor the cause of the kingdom. May today be your parting with them forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you for this great decision. Now please hold on. I want you to walk. The service is still on. Very quickly and you'll be back. Two instructions please listen. One, you will follow that lady when I'm done talking. And we're going to have your details. Please make sure you give your accurate details. Your name and your number and whatever information. We need it because it will help us to be able to follow you up. Number two and please let this be an announcement to the whole house as a general rule every time you are born again the moment you are born again automatically you are a member of the prayer department for one month automatically are we together when you are born again so that for those of us who brought them now if any of your loved ones is among the people you encourage them automatically for the next one month you are a member of the prayer department is a model we have used from the onset of this ministry. When people get born again, the next thing is to give them an opportunity to have a kingdom community. Once they have a community of like-minded people that love God, they will have the strength to be able to shake off the things that are limitations. But if you leave them alone, sooner or later, the pressure will be too much on them and they will go back. Are we together now? So please... The prayer department, 4 to 6 at Rema Chapel. Rema Chapel is just across. For those of you who are not domiciled in Zaria, no problem. When you get your various ministries or places, you can always connect with living churches around and then be part of the prayer team at least for a month. It will build your spirit, you will be filled with the Holy Spirit and then you begin to walk into understand spiritual things. And then from there your growth continues. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Please go ahead and follow the lady. Please, you should create multiple points for them. Appreciate them, everyone. If I told you receive your job, you will clap with all your heart. Keep clapping till they go. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please, those coordinating them, coordinate them very fast. There should be multiple systems so that you coordinate them very fast and then they'll be back to come and catch up with the service. There are quite a number of them. So please, if they need some hands, we should have a few people assist them very quickly. Number two, the second reason why people continue a life of hardship and misery. Second reason, quickly, number two. is ignorance and disobedience to God's principles. Ignorance and disobedience to God's principles. We'll be very fast, please. Just five minutes. Let's wrap this up very quickly so that we can begin to pray. Ignorance and disobedience to God's principles. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15. It says, The labor of the fool wearied every one of them 
because he does not know the road to the city not because there is no road he does not know it ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15 ignorance and disobedience to god's principles write one more scripture ephesians chapter 4 verse 18 ephesians chapter 4 verse 18 we may not have time just write them you can go and read them during your personal time with god ignorance and disobedience to god's principles look up please you know that one of the mandates that god has given us as a ministry is to teach men the principles of the kingdom i am i am obsessed and passionate about helping believers understand the systems in the kingdom and how to walk through those systems and experience victory in their lives so ignorance and disobedience is very costly number three please quickly number three the third reason why people go through perpetual hardship hardship in their life is demonic oppression the reality of demonic oppression write it down ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 the reality of demonic oppression demonic forces are real the activity of the dark world is real the bible did not leave us in confusion as to the fact that the whole world lies in wickedness first john chapter 5 verse 19 first john chapter 5 verse 19 he says we are of god and the whole world lieth in wickedness the condition to experience the the fierce wickedness in this world is that you are born you know um hold on there is there is a popular adage or cliche that people have all around the moment there is any kind of demonic intrusion they say who did i offend you've had that statement who did i offend though i didn't offend it. i left the village peacefully look he said in iniquity did my mother conceive you know the meaning of that i was never given an opportunity to choose whether i want the devil to oppress me or not the moment you are born that reality implicates you at once do not ever trivialize the fact that the dark world is still at work in our days at work does not mean in dominion at work means there is a consistent attempt by the forces of darkness to if allowed jeopardize every part of your christian life and every part of your christian experience finances family career education spiritual life every area satan will not leave any stone unturned to see that it destroys you john 10 10 says the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy he said but i am come that ye may have life and that you may have it more abundantly first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 18 paul himself speaking he says once and again i desire to come unto you but satan hindered us first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 18 but satan hindered us satan can hinder men that's why god puts a miracle service like this to come and break down that that system that he has built over the lives of people I gave us an admonition earlier on while speaking and i want to repeat it never consult mediums the occult and so on and so forth for help no never consult mediums listen the occult the dark world all kinds of extraterrestrial astral transcendental activities in an attempt to receive help Jesus said, I am the door. Every other person who comes came through the window. I am the door. I am the door. When you come in through the door, you are safe. You come in through the window, there are side effects. Two scriptures. Oh, I wish it could be projected, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry about the whole. Um, Leviticus chapter 20, verse 6. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 6.
to play the harlot after them i will even set my face against that soul and i will cut him from off among his people people who consult what familiar spirits people who consult mediums occultic activities right many of them parading as different things you go to your village you enter one room they say sit down we want to do something for you incisions all around for protection say it's this razor blade anybody that touches you that razor blade will strike you demonic activities they concoct one kind of drink and they tell you take it and recite all kinds of things the bible says whoever does that i personally i will set my face against ah but apostle i've done it already you are welcome to the miracle service that's why you will be delivered. That's why you will be sent. From all of that to wives who put their husbands in bottles for correct behavior, to husbands who put their wives, all kinds of, of things people have. People have arrows in their ha homes and, and, and weapons that are, are demonic with, with charms. Let's be sincere. Things you hide under your carpet. You are just sitting down. You see strange men enter your house to slaughter all kinds of animals. They wake you in the middle of the night. All that consult mediums. All that consult mediums. Some persons may be listening to me online. Let, let me tell you, when God convicts you, adjust. Some of us are sincere, but our families, especially those of us who are coming from other faiths, into the Christian life or automatically you need to be brave automatically Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 10 and 11 Deuteronomy chapter 18 quickly please we we'll trust God for a very quick walk tonight thank God by his grace we've made the altar call Deuteronomy 18 verse 10 and 11 if you're not there just listen there shall not be found among you anyone who maketh his son, parents, listen, or daughter pass through the fire. Or who useth divination. Or an observer of times. Or an enchanter. Or a witch. Or a charmer. Zarya's um, city. Where are we? Or a consultor of mediums. Listen, I'm listening to them. Or a wizard. Or a necromancer. Next verse says, For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. Men pass through strange fires. Necromancy. Transcendental meditation. Astral travels. All kinds of extraterrestrial demonic activities. The Bible warns. This is Africa. And I understand. I'm not an American speaking. I've told you my story. Don't think that I was born out of a Bible. My God. There is almost no family here that is innocent. Tra just trace it just one generation after you. Someone worshipped something somewhere. Or didn't receive Christ and was serious. So it's still the same thing. Somebody was involved somewhere. And many people have been victims of those kinds of things. Hallelujah. Demonic powers are real. Their agenda to stop the purposes of God over your life are real. But one thing the Bible says is that the light shines in the darkness. Hallelujah. And it says the darkness cannot comprehend. That's why I know that every force that has held anyone's life today, in the name of the Son of the living God, it must give way. The last reason. Why do people remain under the yoke, the fierce yoke of oppression? The last reason, they trivialize and ignore the place of spiritual empowerment. The last reason I'll give tonight, they trivialize and ignore the place of spiritual empowerment. Yes, we are social beings, but brothers and sisters, we are also spiritual beings. Every man must be empowered. Jesus himself told them, tarry in Jerusalem 
until he be and you be power from on high. Tarry, tarry. Don't be in a rush. Tarry until you have an evidence that can keep darkness away. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. 6 verse 10, Ephesians. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the power of his might. Finally, brethren, finally, koinonia, be strong in the Lord, not in yourself. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the power of his might. Isaiah 10, 27. It shall come to pass in that day, right? That the burden shall be lifted from off your shoulder and the yoke shall be taken away from your neck and the burden shall be destroyed because this is the singular reason why burdens are destroyed. Because of the anointing. Because of the anointing. Do not reject empowerment. Listen, empowerment is not for men of God. Are we together? Empowerment is not for those doing church and ministry and evangelism. Empowerment is not for leaders. Empowerment is for every believer. Every believer. The empowerment of the Holy Spirit is your basis for establishment. You cannot live in today's wicked world without empowerment. Apostle Joshua Selman does not guarantee to be there for you every time you need him. But there is an anointing you can receive from the Holy Spirit. Standing in partnership with the Lord will raise a standard against him. I believe in running to men of God to help you and pray for you. But there is no man of God that gives you guarantee of 100% attention. It's impossible. There are times you can call me and I'm sleeping. Why? Because I'm human. But there is a keeper of Israel who neither sleeps nor slumbers. And the Bible says that he's willing that outpouring of power. Part of the things you must trust God for tonight is an empowerment. An empowerment against fear. An empowerment against all kinds of oppressions of darkness. Fear. Right? Perfect love. Cast out fear. For fear hath torment. There are many of us who need empowerment. You are afraid. Just to go from here to Kaduna, you are praying in tongues all through the car. Not praying in tongues of faith. Just fear. You want to nod your head and rest a little. The driver just might say, Driver, be careful, oh, please. Fear. Fear makes us suspect everyone. You come to someone's house, they put food and you look at it. I say, No, they, they put spoon here. Why is this person? This person wants to kill me. Fear. You need an empowerment. If you don't say, I, I'm old, don't be afraid. You are now a man. No, there's no such thing as a man. A man means you have an anointing. Hello? A man means you have what? No matter how old you are, gentlemen, listen to me. If this thing is not on you, you are not yet a man. Because gone are the days where you fight with horses and chariots. Someone stands and speaks. And a wicked arrow lands upon your life with all your energy and physical stature. Makes rubbish and nonsense out of you. The woman who makes incantation, you can beat her physically. But she will call you from Italy to come and die you. Men are men who have power. Power with God. Power with God. Power with God. They invoke a charm against you before they finish their death. That's the registration to me that not every word is fake. Come on now. They bring your picture as they, as they show it. The fire they are trying to invoke comes out from the picture and burns the face of every devil to ashes. And you are not praying. It's not like you are praying at home. Maybe you are even cheating. What is working? My head. My head. My, my head shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. The anointing is a powerful mystery. It's a mystery till we get to heaven we will understand. The anointing is not falling down and shaking. The anointing is not people moving around. Those are just effects. Boy, the anointing is a force. A force that works. You speak with the anointing, you get results. You speak because you are shouting, you have some truth. See that? You make bold claims without the anointing. They visit you in the night. 
you make bold claims with the anointing, whether day or night, you are still in control. How terrible art thou in thy ways? Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to thee. In the name of Jesus from tonight, some of you, as you are going back home, you are not even saying anything. As you are going back to your house, it's an announcement to the spiritual climate of your territory. You are saying no more. No more. No more. Nobody passes with all this wicked spirit and then it lands on you. No, I'm not, I'm not a dumping ground. They don't cast a demon from a crusade ground and it's moving through arid regions and just sees me and lands on. Don't think I'm joking. Demons still find men. You come out fine and return back with a fierce spirit on you. And find out that you are suddenly getting angry. You were not like that. You are an angry person. You could never insult your husband. But something comes as if everybody is a human being. No, a stranger has found entrance into your life. Ah, I'm born again. No demon can live in me. Please keep quiet. You are a spirit. You live in a body. Connecting your spirit and your body is a soul. Very big space for any amount of demons to stay. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please take it serious. There are some habits people you cannot use resolution to stop. Oh man of God, I love God, but I just sit down and once I'm on my laptop, the next thing I'm watching for, I can't help it. No, 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 no. It's not about trying to help it. There is an anointing that must stand upon your life in heaven because it's a spirit. Fill me up. Fill me instruction the Lord gave me that at the point this oil touches the head of everyone then we begin to speak dramatic miracles dramatic deliverances bring them out lift your hands in the name of the Lord Jesus, the Son of the living God. Every 
one online and here by the mystery of this oil any stranger Kabataya, any covenant every wicked spirit manipulating the destiny of anyone I decree and declare right now by the fire of the spirit let there be deliverance right now inside and outside yokes inside and outside I stand upon this oil I stand upon this place I decree and declare anyone under any demonic manipulation right now in the name of Jesus I command the spirits I command the devils off you go from their lives now off you go from their lives now bring them out lift your hands at the count of three you will shout Jesus my God I see massive deliverance outside massive deliverance outside freedom for people and families at the count of three that's all I want you to do thank you Jesus let there be complete deliverance one two shout it now three Jokes be destroyed Jokes be destroyed every spirit every force every spirit every force Every spirit, every force, every spirit, lift your hands. The spirits that cause failure, that everything you do, you don't succeed. Right now, in the name of Jesus. I command them to leave you now. Leave you now. Leave you now. The spirit of failure. The spirit of failure. The spirit of failure. Lift your hands. My God. I want to pray for students. Because I'm seen like a blue flame. There is a spirit that which haunts the academics of students. You are a student here, get ready. Liberty comes to you at the count of three. One, two, three. Leave them right now. Leave them right now. They are academics. Oh, they have not been able to pass job. They have not been able to graduate. I command that spirit. You must go now. You must go now. You must go now. You must go now. Lift your hands. I don't know what force of darkness is responsible for bad luck in the lives of men. Simple things that should work out never work out. Now, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, whoever is a victim of that oppression as I speak now let the fire of the Holy Ghost land upon your life right now land upon your life right now land upon your life right now help them please bad luck lift your hands I tell you, there are so many miracles happening. Listen, listen. I want to pray. I want to pray for men and women, inside and outside. Listen to me. Do you know hardship is a cause? Hardship is more than poverty. Poverty is absence of money. Hardship is a hard life. No matter how high you rise, your life becomes hard. Lift your hands. I'm praying for families, not just individuals. 
So the power of God will come upon you from your family. I'm standing here and the Lord is asking me to face the minister's seat and stretch my hands. Every spirit of hardship, every spirit of hardship, every spirit of hardship, I command freedom. I command freedom. Now I turn to the congregation. At the count of three, shout Jesus and that devil must leave your family. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Help that lady. Go, 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 go. Hardship. 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 I command you. In the name of Jesus. I command you. You must go. I command you. You must go. You are a spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. Who is Veronica? Veronica. Veronica. Just leave them. We are praying. All those under the anointing, I set you free now. I command those devils, leave them forever. Leave their families forever. Strangers, go right now. The Bible says they will run when they hear his voice out of their hiding place. Therefore, I command every stranger in anyone's life and destiny. It's time for you to live and never return. Veronica, you are Veronica. Where are your parents? I'm seeing a light. Is your mother here? She's in Saria. That's what I mean. Right here. Go and tell your family that God is bringing a major breakthrough. I'm seeing crying all over. But I'm prophesying to you that a, a breakthrough, a new chapter opens for the family in the name of Jesus Christ. Now listen. I'm just going to speak to a few people. But before I pray, I want you to check yourself. There are people you will check yourself and the pain is gone. You check yourself and there is a miracle. Run where you are. Don't sit down. The moment you find out there is a miracle, run. Pastor Jimmy will be here. Immediately run. We'll just take a few testimonies and then I'll minister healing very quickly. We have to be fast. Our time is gone. Who are these people? You are all Veronica. Please look at me. There's witchcraft in your family. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Don't let it go right now. Over her and her family, I cause witchcraft completely in the name of Jesus Christ. Is your sister here? Where is she? Sister, are you here? Quickly, please come. Come and hold her hands. I see a fight for the destiny of the people in this family, and God wants to set you free now. I stretch my hands. You are holding your hands. Representing the family. I break every altar. Responsible for hardship and pain in your family. And I declare right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. That as my hand comes on both of you. Let there be the beginning of strange testimonies. Strange testimonies. Strange testimonies. Strange testimonies. In the name of Jesus. God is giving people miracles. Are you giving Jesus praise? Come on Koinonia. Make sure they confirm you and check you. God is touching people. Touching people. There is a lady. There is a lady you came here. Since 29th December. You have been bleeding non-stop. Check yourself. It just stopped right now. Check yourself. It just stopped right now. Hallelujah. We are going to do two things concurrently. Your prayer request. Did you come with them? Or you forgot? Please bring them out. Always come with your prayer request when you come for the miracle service. Now, ushers, quickly, please collect the prayer request. If you are trusting God for a healing miracle, please, now is the time. Quickly, come out here very quickly. Come out here very quickly. Those outside, hold on. Those outside, if you are in the overflow and you are yet to come in. If you have come in, it's okay, you can come. But if you are yet to come, those in the overflow, the first overflow, just walk outside. Stand in front, outside at the projector. Those, the overflow at the roadside, just stand right there um, so that we can, we can make it fast. Those inside and those who have entered, come to the front quickly. 
trusting God for a healing miracle. Pass your request to the ushers. If there are ushers here or protocol, please collect quickly. And then you can come quickly. Please, educate. Okay. Pastor Jimmy will be outside. You will be outside with um, Shade. Come, stand up. Oh, stand up. This pastor's wife will have to start walking now. Stand up. In the name of Jesus Christ, please. Three of you will go outside. In the name of Jesus, you will lay hands. Please come. I'll lay my hands on you. Let me lay my hands on them. It's a very good thing to expose them. Father, please anoint them as they lay hands on the sick. In the name of Jesus, as they lay hands on the sick, let your healing power flow through them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So please, you go outside the gym. You can lead them. They can go outside here. And then, in the name of Jesus Christ, as they lay hands on you, please, if they don't ask you anything, don't worry. Just receive by faith. You don't have to start explaining. Our time is gone. Then, right here, Pastor Alpha, Pastor Femi, uh, Benga, okay, promise, you can also go. Mike, join them. Um, okay, no, no, no. Let's not do it that way. One, two, three. One, two, three. Will be enough. Okay, Mike, you can. Or, Pastor Alpha, you can stay. Um, Pastor Femi, Benga, Mike, I promise, you can go outside. You, you, you just position yourself and then you minister to them very quickly. And then, Pastor Alpha, you can join me. And then we we'll do it in the worship team. You will help us. Please collect the request very quickly. Let's be very fast about it in the name of Jesus. I'm, I'm praying a prayer now. Everyone, please participate and say amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that everyone sick here is declared free right now. And as hands are laid on you, let there be supernatural healing. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. At Calvary. At Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. In the name of Jesus. Jesus is
Aaron is here. Just, just indicate and then you'll drop it, please. Don't disorganize the line so that we can hurry up. Because by the time you go back, they will have collected.
this request. Stretch your hands on this request. We are going to pray on them right now. Please stretch your hands on this request. In the name of Jesus, there is a God that answers prayers. If you are outside, don't worry. You are still on the healing line. It's still pray for you. But for time's sake, let's stretch our hands in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and begin to declare that every request, please make sure we have all the requests. The request, yes. Every request is turned into a testimony. Go ahead and begin to declare it. This is our year of triumph. In this year of triumph, we declare and declare. We declare and declare. Supernatural miracles. Are you praying? Are you praying? I say it again, between now and miracle service February, return with dear some testimonies. Every impossible situation represented here as touching your life, your finances, your health, your family, may the God of heaven turn it into a testimony. Anyone who must be cleared on the way for this testimony to come to pass, we clear them from the way. Anyone who must appear for this request to be testimonies, we command them to appear. Anything that must change for this to be called a testimony, we command it to change. In the name of Jesus. Father, we trust you. We have presented this before you. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pick it back as testimonies. In the name of Jesus, you will do this and you will glorify yourself. In the name of Jesus. Now lift up your hands and pray for you now. I pray in the name of Jesus and I pray for your life. Hard life, the life of hardship. I command it to end now from your life. I command it to end now from your family. I command it to end now from your life. To end from your family. The kind of opportunity you have never seen in the name of Jesus. Some of you, beginning from tomorrow, you will begin to see it. Believe what I'm saying. You will begin to see it in the name of Jesus. I don't know what a current event happens in your life. While you think you have escaped it, it happens again. I'm prophesying to you. It comes to an end right now. In this year of triumph, it comes to an end right now. It comes to an end right now. Please stretch your hands towards me. I want to speak favor to your life. In the name of Jesus, 
the God who by grace has favored this ministry in an unbelievable dimension I pray may the favor that God has put upon this ministry I transfer it strangely to your life receive it receive it receive it receive it right now it begins to help her please my God receive it right now I release that favor strength favor strength favor strength favor strength favor men helping you strength favor women helping you believe it strength favor enemies helping you critics helping you mysteriously I decree and declare whatever has refused to work in your life you try it is working for others you see it working for others but when it's your turn it does not work I command it to begin to work now I command it to begin to work now ladies I pray for you I don't know what has covered your glory you are great you are virtuous but glory covered I declare that from this miracle service an unfailing of your glory an unfailing of your glory I want to pray for everybody but specifically for our brothers one of the blessings of this year is that God will bless your hands if you don't believe it just keep quiet don't criticize just keep quiet but for as many who are trusting God that God will establish you as a man I prophesy to you receive that unction receive that unction the unction that establishes men to be able to take care of their homes to be ready to be a man in deep ta, 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 ta. receive that grace right now receive that grace right now lift your hands and see pray some of us are victims of foolishness therefore I pray for you the spirit of wisdom be baptized with it right now be baptized with the spirit of wisdom I don't know what you have lost but this is January God has declared that it's a year of trial therefore I command between now and next miracle service receive double restoration double restoration double restoration I want to pray for you for speed see let me tell you something when speed comes into your life when speed comes into your life you will be surprised that within a short time you will catch up and do a lot of things I prophesy to you where they have overtaken you something comes on your life this night run like Elijah pursue pursue overtake recover all without fail I prophesy pursue overtake recover all two more prophecies and we are done I don't know what distracted you from loving God you were not like that your prayer life was a priority your word life was a priority but something feared you off I pray fresh impartation of hunger for God and the things of God take it now take it now fresh hunger fresh fire fresh hunger prayer fire word fire fasting fire prayer fire word fire fasting fire receive it in the name of Jesus I break the course of spiritual laziness laziness to wake up and pray laziness to fast laziness to study I break it from your life in the name of Jesus 
And I pray for you. Last prayer point. Some of you have been obeying God in the secret. But the result has refused to manifest. According to the word. When you do things in secret. God rewards you openly. Is that not what the Bible says? I want to prophesy to you. I don't know who shut the door. I'm praying oh, And this is for my spirit. I know you have been touching. But there's, we have not seen the evidence. I know my God has helped you. I pray for you. And open testimonies. Open proofs. Open results. Receive it right now. Let that fire come on you. Let that fire come on you. Let that fire come on you. Anyone on your job here and you are having cases with your superiors, I'm praying for you now. Beginning from Monday, I change their hearts towards you. Whenever they are looking for men to promote, may you be the one for the recommendation. And anyone here called jobless, who is interested in a job or your loved ones, in the name of Jesus Christ, I don't care whether you apply or not, may the God of heaven orchestrate favor to your life. Every businessman here, every businesswoman, I command it to work for you. Help them. I command it. Ah, no, no, no. I have that anointing. Oh, that one God gave me. I release it for you. Let it work for you. The power of performance. May the God I serve make it work for you. The power of performance. May the God I serve make it work for you. Access to men you do not know. Access to their resources. Access to favor from them. As you sleep in the night, may the God that I serve show you secrets in your dream. That you will wake up jumping and smiling. You will wake up rejoicing in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The honor that God has placed by grace upon this house. I pray you are part of what God is doing and there's no reason why you should not partake of it. You have honored me you have honored God. I compel that anyone that looks at your eyes, except you don't have eyes, but that they can look at your eyes. I compel favor from them to you. The Bible says Esther obtained favor from anyone who saw her. Not talk to her. They just see you and rise up to help you. May the God that I serve make it happen for you. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.